Okay, everyone, let's see who's, we do have some attendees. Uh, for those of us, oh, yes, um, the Needham channel and a couple of, and a few people. Uh, I apologize for being late. I was having a little bit of a computer problem and having trouble logging into the meeting, but I'm finally here. So, good evening and welcome. My name is Paul Alpert and I am the chair of the Needham Planning Board. This is an open meeting of the Needham Planning Board. Today is May 3rd, I believe, May 3rd, uh, 2022, and it is now 7.25 p.m. This meeting is being conducted remotely consistent with current state regulations and is being recorded. Public access to this meeting does not ensure that there will be public participation unless required by law. This meeting will not have public comment, except in connection with any hearing that is on the agenda. Tonight, we only have one hearing on the agenda. It is a public hearing with regard to the application for Henry Hospitality Inc. doing business as the James with regard to um, outdoor seating at a restaurant. Um, First, we'll confirm that we have a quorum of the members of the planning board present. When I call your name, please respond to your present that you are present. And then, um, and then I will introduce the planning department uh, staff. So, Artie Crocker. Present. Natasha Espada. Present. Adam Block. Present. Jean McKnight. Present. Everyone is here. Our planning director, Lee Newman. Present and our Assistant Planning Director, Alexandra Klee. Present. As each agenda item is reached, I will introduce participants who are here to present or discuss proposals or projects. For those participating in the meeting, please also be aware that others may be able to see you and hear you. Anything that you share or state will be a matter of public record. All supporting materials for this meeting, including the agenda, are available on the town's website www.needhamma.gov, unless otherwise noted. Ground rules for this meeting. The ground rules for this meeting are designed to allow for an accurate public record. Each of the speakers on our agenda will be introduced. After speakers conclude their remarks, each board member will be asked by name for any comment, question, or motion. All votes will be by roll call. For each participant, please remember to state your name for the record before speaking. And for each person from the public who is recognized to speak, please remember to state your name and address for the record before speaking. That concludes our introductory remarks. We are a little bit late. We have a 720 public hearing. We are now starting at 728. This is a public hearing with regard to amendment to major project site plan special permit number 91-7. Henry Hospitality Inc. doing business as the James is the petitioner with regard to property located at 1027 Great Plain Avenue in Needham regarding the request to permit up to 69 outdoor seats by the James Pub on five on-site parking spaces. That's in the uh, Chapel Street parking lot. So, Alex, if you would please bring over um, Mr. Stuart Henry. Mr. Henry, welcome. Can you hear us? Doesn't look like you're muted. Adam, you are muted. You said something, but I can't. I can't see Mr. Henry. Uh, no, I. He's. There's oh, wait. now his mute button is on. I can see his name in a square, but or, or a rectangle, but I'm not seeing him. <laughs> Mr. Henry, if you're able to turn on your video and yep. turn off your there mute. There he is. Yeah. Hey, welcome. How you doing, folks? Good. You're outdoors. We, we're on the patio. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Beautiful night for it. It's gorgeous, yeah. 
You're not, uh, you're not, you're not over, the, over, over the allocated limit, are you, by any chance, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so, would you like to uh, get us started and describe what your what your petition is about? Sure, yeah. Um, if you would. Oh, wait, before we do that, may I have a motion to dispense with the reading of the public of, of, of the legal notice? So moved. Moved. Second. I have, a, I have a motion made by Artie Crocker and a second by Adam Block. Any discussion? We'll take the vote. Artie Crocker? Aye. Natasha Espada? Aye. Adam Block? Aye. Jean McKnight? Aye. And the chair votes aye. It's unanimous. We can now move on. Thank you, Mr. Henry, for your patience. Uh, well, folks, thanks very much for having us here today. Um, first of all, I'd just like to thank you guys and the town of Needham for giving us the access to this patio, which we wouldn't even be having this conversation if we hadn't had gotten it during the pandemic. So thank you. Um, right now, we, we're we just uh, looking to get 69 seats on the patio, uh, keep the same footprint as we've had throughout the pandemic, um, and just build another platform from the building uh, to access more more uh, wheelchair accessible tables. Great. The application uh, says um, we'll be using, it looks like three public parking spaces, but that might be a penmanship issue because the other official documents say on five. I know. Uh, so we're, we're on uh, the three parking spots. Um, here, there is two more at our entrance uh, behind Fans Taylor's. Yes. So, they're, they're still used. I, it's, yeah, it's other employees in the area sit there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Mr. Henry, um, we will ask you to, um, after the hearing, you know, after tonight, but consult with um, our planning staff to make sure that your application is correct. Um, I noticed that the application asks, are you requesting outdoor dining on private parking spaces? And you said, no, you said it's public, but if it weren't, if it were totally public, you wouldn't be in front of the planning board. You'd be in front of the- right. zone, uh, okay. you'd, you'd be in front of the select board. So right. that needs to be changed. Um, that that may be the only thing. Are, 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 are you still asking for year year round? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Not yeah. just seasonal. No, year round. Yeah, we, we did it all through the winter. OK. Um, so I took a look at your application. And I took a look at the second license and memorandum of understanding, which you entered into with the town recently. I think it's dated March 22nd, 2022, March 11th, March 10th and March 11th. Well, it's dated March 2nd. And then um, it was signed, signed by Elizabeth Heffernan on March 10th and Triantos and Dina Thomas on March 11th of 2022. So, so this is this is recent. And reading this, um, your ability to have year-round is really subject to this agreement. Yeah. And so we can't grant you year-round use. I've got no problem with your having year round use and we can, we can amend your special permit to allow it as long as it conforms with your requirements under the second license and memorandum of understanding because it looks like that's subject to select board approval. Okay. Okay. Um, so let me read into the record 
uh, the comments that we got from the town boards. Um, we have, I'll get into the community. We've had multiple communications from David Roach. And so I'll get to those at the end separately because uh, the others are fairly quick. We have an email from Dennis Condon, our fire chief. The fire department is okay with this plan. We have an email from Tara Gurge, the assistant public health director. Um, have you seen this email, Ms. Henry? No, not from Tara, no. Okay. Um, it's basically her usual requirements, but you need to be familiar with them and make sure that you comply with our public health department's requirements. Um, she has two bullet points. It's short. Uh, one, you must continue to maintain the exterior in a clean and sanitary condition as not to attract. Oh, I apologize. Uh, I have seen this, that email. I'm sorry. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's been pointed out to us. We have a letter from um, Thomas Ryder, our town engineer, saying that um, he has no objection to these plans. Um, and then I will get to the emails from Dave Roach, our building commissioner. Um, there was a, a question um, about the number of seats and because of the number of seats, the bathroom accommodations. And so Mr. Henry, you made arrangements to use a third private bathroom. Yep. So the upshot is we then got a letter from David Roach saying that with, with your having the, the ability to use that third bathroom um, from, um, from, I guess- Arch it's Architrave. Architrave. Architrave, right, right. Arch Architrave store, um, you're fine for the restaurant. And so question about the that, commissioner yeah. is satisfied that that Mr. requirement has, has been met. And we do have the agreement that you signed with Charles Intha of um, Architrave. So um, yes, Adam. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I, um, I just had a question. Uh, um, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yep. I had a question about that, uh, that arrangement with um, Architrave. Their store hours are different than yours. And if I understand correctly, he owns that building that also has another restaurant in it. Uh, so how does, how does that arrangement work if his office is closed? So um, we actually, we rent a space below that building. He, he doesn't own the building, he's, he's a, a lessee as well. Um, but we have a space in the basement that we rent as a storage space. So we have access to the back door and right into the bathrooms, right at, right at the back. Great, okay, that's so we, we, we have 24 hour access to it. That's great, I, I wasn't aware. Thanks for clarifying, sorry, yeah. Mr. Chair. No, oh, that's fine because um, I'm done with with my comments. So um, I'll start with you, Adam. Do you do you do you have anything else that uh, you would like to add? Initially, I didn't understand. Uh, well, first, I'm going to back up and say I love your restaurant. <laughs> you guys have uh, fantastic food. My wife and my son and I um, always have a great time there. I'm there frequently with some friends. Um, Initially, when I read the application, I couldn't figure out what, what, how you're going to solve the issue of the bathrooms, and then, uh, and then I saw the correspondence from the building commissioner, and uh, and the, um, you know, the arrangement with uh, with Architrave, which cured it. So, my questions uh, just related to that, the bathroom access, and with that, uh, you know, congratulations on the success of your business. No, and uh, I don't have any further comment or question. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Jean McKnight, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, yes, I want to make sure I understand the uh, plan, the exterior plan by Scott Melting, architect. Um, uh, by reference to the plan, um, 
if where it says entry exit on the left side, is that the entry exit where the it's the, the railroad uh, walkway on that side? No, that's uh, the other side of the restaurant between us and Architrive uh, Toy Store. All right, so, so I'm trying to remember, I've been to the restaurant a few times, but not recently. So uh, uh, the entrance that's on the side of the railroad right of way is the other one that on the plan is under the logo that says the James Pub and Provision, and it says restaurant entry. No, that no, Gene. That's the that's the entry from the outdoor seating into the indoor of the restaurant itself. What you cannot see, Gene, from this plan, is the kind of inside of the restaurant and the front door off the right of way from the uh, MBTA. Oh, so what I'm looking at when I look at this plan is only the exterior seating, and I'm not looking at the restaurant itself. Yeah, correct. It says yeah. restaurant entry, and that um, that entry is the rest is the entry to the restaurant yeah. that I'm familiar yeah. with that you enter or off the railroad right of way. Okay, so now I'm looking at. Wow, that is quite a. Uh, a large outdoor eating area. Um, I should go there and enjoy it sometime. Um, so <laughs> then my only other, I, um, I certainly uh, second uh, our chair's uh, comment that um, since you have presently a license agreement with the select board where they're letting you use certain parking spaces for your rubbish disposal area, and you're letting the town use those five other spaces, um, you have to get the select board uh, to approve the use of those five parking spaces because otherwise you're in violation of the license agreement. I'm sure you're aware of that. Um, but the only, my other question is, um, apparently you are using what's now a handicapped parking space. Um, that strikes me as problematic to eliminate a handicapped parking space. Um, if a handicapped person were coming to your restaurant or indeed uh, going to other establishments in the plaza there, where would they park with the elimination of this space? Uh, they can park right outside the entrance to the patio that have direct access right onto the patio. So Is right, there right Right is there another space there that's uh, of the right size and with the right signage for handicapped parking? There, there isn't the right signage yet, but uh, we, we could put that up there. It's, there's two spaces right there. But that is definitely something I'd look into getting, getting uh, a placard up there. Would you be amenable to our yes, making sir. that a condition in our amendments of the site plan? That you that you replace the the um, handicap space that's sure. being used with another yeah. handicap another handicap space. Good. Yeah. That Gene, since over that the many problem? decades I have taken family rest family members in wheelchairs to restaurants, I'm very conscious of that need. Yeah. Um, so uh, so I guess those those are my only comments. The need for amendment to license agreement. Uh, I see how you've handled the bathroom situation and uh, that they will continue to be uh, a correct size and properly signed um, handicap parking space um, near the entrance uh, to the restaurant or to the uh, outdoor eating area. And then if a person were, if a handicapped person were entering via the outdoor eating area, would they then be able to enter the restaurant or how would they get into the oh, inside yeah. of the restaurant? Yeah, yeah. 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 through, through no the problem. back door, it's a 42 inch ADA um, door. Okay, good. Okay, uh, I'm gonna set them with my questions. Adam, may I go to Natasha and Artie before? Sure. You're coming? Good, thank sure. you. Natasha, yes. I just Great have a quick question. I, I appreciate the plan. It is. Um, it, the the site plan and just in general, it's really, really helpful to see it and appreciate all of the accessibility um, uh, 
provisions that are there. One, just one quick question is just, um, why, why is there a six inch platform in all of the, in, in most of the seating? Is it for, to create a canopy over it for the structure of the canopy? Uh, no, actually, um, it, it was completely waterlogged the first year we had it out there with just the picnic tables. Okay. So we just wanted to raise it. So anytime okay. it rained, you were just sitting in a puddle. So we just we just wanted to raise it up a little. Okay. And so I, I you know, I think it looks really good. My only my only question is the the where you used to have the picnic benches. That's now the raised platform where you have some seats and a ramp. Um, the ramp needs handrails. Um, and they, they extend on both sides. Um, that's the only thing that I see. Otherwise, I think it looks really good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Marty? Um, no, you've hit mostly, um, I'd say hit most everything I was thinking about. And, um, you know, the bathroom, the Adam, you, 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 you keyed on that thing as far as the operation errors, operating hours. So that was great. Um, Natasha, you keyed on some things about the, you know, what's the ramp about? And what's, what's interesting is that the, uh, it was mentioned about the platform or the ramp earlier in, in referencing in, in accessibility from a wheelchair, but yet we, you know, we didn't have a, a wheelchair accessible or handicapped accessible parking spot, but now we're, now we're going to have one there. So that's good. So, um, no, that's it. A great place you've made. Uh, you have quite the following um, great bands that came in. I actually sang with the band about two and a half months ago. Really? <laughs> yes, on a Thursday night, yes. No way. Yeah. I must have missed it. Yeah. Must have missed it. yeah. But uh, no, it's it's you you really you've really done a fantastic job. And uh, and, and you've made Needham proud. Oh, so, thank you so much. Thank That's you. really nice to say. Thank you. Okay, Adam, back to you. So um Lee, when I'm looking at the parking plan, I think. There are two parking plans. One where it says proposed dumpster location. And then the other, the title of the other one is also proposed dumpster location. Okay, so what is your question? So there is a section on this, which is I guess page 14 of our, um, uh, page 14 of our uh, packet. Mm -hmm. There is this yellow section, uh, a yellow outline around, I think, one, two, three, four parking spaces. And then it shows uh, bollards. It doesn't actually show the structure of where the restaurant is, but I'm assuming it's on the other side of that. Is that right? Because I know it's kind of behind the uh, the the uh, fan tailor. Is my understanding is those that those parking spaces that are shown in yellow are the parking spaces that the town basically had an agreement to utilize um, for public parking at the time the dumpster installation was done, and it's a portion of these parking spaces which are now proposed for outdoor dining. Mm -hmm. So if those are public spaces, does that have to go no, through? No, th these are private spaces. What happened here is there are, there's the town, there's um, the town owns a portion of the parking lot and, the, and a portion of what looks like the parking lot is privately owned and under private ownership. Um, and so these spaces that you see in yellow are on private property. The, okay. um, so they're, okay. they're privately owned. And, and, and um, at the time the dumpster installation was done, um, for these restaurants because the town was losing parking spaces on the property it controlled. The agreement was that a portion of those private spaces would then become open for public use. And now they're being converted back to private use, but they are, are on private property. So Adam, so um, they're on private property, but they're subject to the license agreement with the town. The town has a license to use those spaces for public use which is why they, um, Mr. The, Henry now has to go to the town and make sure that he gets their permission to, um, uh, to allow him to use right. those spaces year round is his request. Right. So um, uh, the way I read the license agreement and I only read it through fair, fit, fairly quickly 
but it sounds like the town can grant that request and then they can pull it back at any time if they feel that they need the spaces back. But right. I may be wrong, but that's that's up to the select board and town council to decide. And then the and then the following page, Lee, is it is it the same? We're looking at the same thing, but from 180 degrees different. Let me get the next page up. Oops, wrong thing here. Yes. Okay. All right. So I thought that was the case, but I, um, I just wanted to confirm. So thank you for indulging me. Yes, Jean. Um, I just noticed the date of the license agreement that was in our packets. Yeah, it's very recent. It's in yes, 2022, yeah. and I, I I see that that's really extending the license that it was originally granted in 2015. I'm just surprised that that extension of the license was so recent when the uh, parties might have been talking about the uh, need for the outdoor seating at that time just two months ago. Mm. No. Was there any discussion? I, I'm asking now, I guess, Mr. Henry, was there any uh, discussion or in with the select board or anticipation that there would be this need coming right up now for the use of that area? I'm, so, I'm sorry, the train is going past. I just, I just uh, lost you there. I'm sorry. I missed that last part. Wait for the train. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah um, I, I said I was surprised to see that the um, second license and memorandum of agreement was uh, executed only two months ago. Right. And wouldn't you have anticipated two months ago the need for the spaces for the outdoor dining area? Well, that's covered in the that's covered in the agreement about out, out, outdoor dining. The the agreement contemplates outdoor dining. Um, let me find it. Yes, Gene, oh. there was one, the first agreement did not contemplate any um, outdoor dining on that property. Um, so the agreement, or the original agreement ran for five years. It had actually expired. It needed to be renewed. And when it was renewed, it was done in such a way in the a, a language was added to enable outdoor dining to happen oh, at the discretion I, of the select board. Yeah, thank uh, you. I'm sorry. I see that now in section eight. Section eight, yes. Okay, I'm, I'm satisfied now. I had missed that earlier. Yeah, I mean, it, it refers to seasonal out, outdoor seating, mm. but, but I'm sure that that if the select board is is amenable to the to the year round seating, they'll they'll either amend this or find some way to uh, right. to, to allow it. We will. We'll, my recommendation to the board is that. Um, uh, we make it clear in in our special permit that um, that the year round seating will will not be in violation of the special permit, um, but it's subject to the to the uh, agreement with the select board. Yeah, and all they have to do is um, uh, agree. Uh, Agree pursuant to Section Eight of, of the existing licenses. And got it. Yes, sorry, do you have something else? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I know we've been through a winter, at least one winter now, where that uh, that patio built. And I suppose the answer to the question is yes, it worked out. But so, so my question is related to snow removal. I would, you know, it's, it's creates you know, I guess I'd say a little bit more difficulty of dealing with the whole snow removal. What's happened with that? Where's it going? Has it been trucked away? I'm just curious what's happening because of that. I know, again, the answer is it was dealt with, but I'm curious to what degree. If, if anyone knows, or if Mr. Henry, if you know yourself, what's happening with that snow removal in that area, because it's a little more difficult now, I would, I would think. Not, yeah, not, yeah. Within the, not within the patio, but the plowing around the patio. Right, right. Well, we've, we've actually all, the, the restaurants and uh, the uh, need of fine wines in the corner of all, and um, Citizen Banks actually, have always been responsible for this part of the parking lot because of it, because of it been private. We always take care of the, the snow removal. Mm -hmm. So uh, this year, um, Citizens Bank, they have their own guys that come and take away theirs. We had 
us and Needham Fine Wines and Gary had uh, plow removal come in and they pushed everything up against the patio, basically. So it's so a cleared, cleared away for, to get from one end to the other. I mean, I mean pushed against it from the, let's say the entrance into the No, patio no, area. along the, uh, along the longer side of it, against the parking lot side. The other side, uh, it was taken away. It was pulled all away. And, and it was pushed up against the, the wall a little bit on fan side. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's, there's, all, I mean, there's always a solution. There's always a way to make something work. It's just, you know, obviously this requires a little bit more, a little more action to, to try yeah. to make it. So I'm just curious. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Anything else from the planning board members? Not seeing anything more. I'm going to go to the uh, attendees list. And uh, if there's anybody who's in attendance who would like to speak on this matter or ask a question on, on this matter, please uh, use your raise hand <laughs> button on your Zoom screen and we'll be happy to, to call on you and, and have you come over. I'll give it a minute or two here because I'm not seeing any hands. I won't give it a minute or two. I'll give it a moment or two. Okay, doesn't look like anyone wants to raise any questions. So uh, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So move. Second. second. So I have a motion by Artie Crocker and a second by Gene McKnight to close the hearing. Um, any, any discussion? Seeing none, um, the screens have moved around. I'm gonna take you in the order on my screen. So Artie Crocker. Aye. Gene McKnight. Aye. Natasha Espada. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The hearing is closed. Lee, um, I think I you, you have what we need. I can prepare an affirmative decision for you, which addresses the concerns um, and the conditions that you asked um, to have incorporated into that draft and presented at the next meeting. Great. So the next meeting is? Two weeks from tonight. Two weeks from tonight. So um, you may want to be back. We will be reading the decision. Um, Lee, will you provide Mr. Henry with a copy of the decision beforehand so that he has a chance to, to see it? Okay. Yes, and then if you wish to comment on, on something, because we usually, when, when you're represented by counsel, we usually ask, ask the petitioner's lawyers if, uh, uh, if they've read the agreement and, and if they have any issues with it. So if we'll, you have, we'll have an opportunity to do that. And, it, and if you, when you, when Lee sends it to you and you've had a day to look at it, you can also ask, you know, call or email Lee and ask her any questions before we discuss it at the planning board. Okay. And then we'll discuss it and we'll vote the, re the relief um, and- uh, On the decision. The decision. And then you'll be set to go. A little bit okay. later, later in the season, I'm sure than you wanted to get started, but- Okay. We're getting there. Thank you so Good. much, Thank folks. You. If really I if I it. if I could just ask one thing for our note taker, um, Stuart, who who's the lady with you? Just oh, so we Mary, have our record. Mary Kylie, this is the GM of the James. Hi. Thank you very much, Mary Kylie. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Best of luck. Thank you so much, guys. Thank we'll you. be by soon for a pint and a burger. All right. Excellent. We'll be here. <laughs> so. Um, we do have a couple of decisions to review, but we have an appointment that was scheduled for 750. It is now 759. So why don't we move on to uh, the 750 appointment for a uh, minor project review with regard to um, the property located at 1330 Highland Avenue, which is the Emory Grover building due to be discussed at town meeting tomorrow night. So, uh, Alex, if you would bring over the participants for this. Um, we have coming aboard here on behalf of the town, we have Hank Half, our Director of Building Design and Construction. And we have our council, our town council, Chris Heap, 
and uh, we have the architect, Joel Bargman. Gentlemen, welcome. Good to see you. Hello, Hank. Nice to see you. Hi, Chris. Always good to see you. Hello, everyone. Mr. Bargman, we don't see you yet. There you are. Welcome. Um, Mr. Chair, if I could just provide a clarification on, on process here, because it's a little, um, this, is a this is a minor project review. I think we had all anticipated doing a major project review, which would have placed this project on under site plan approval authority by the planning board, uh, but it did not hit the trigger for a major project. Um, but because the applicant is also looking for parking waivers, that relief now needs to be granted by the ZBA. Uh, but this project does trigger a minor project review. So your role in this is to provide um, comments to the ZBA um, as a minor project. Um, and the ZBA has a public hearing on the application scheduled for later this month. Okay. And so this is the formal mi minor project review and it does not require public notice or uh, a formal hearing. Yes, and we don't issue a decision. We just issue our recommendations on the application to the CBA. Okay, great. I'm gonna turn the floor over to the lawyer as I always do. So, Chris. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, I was gonna turn it over to Hank Haft to get us, get us all started, if that's okay with you. That's fine with me because Hank speaks plain English. And Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and we and we oh, now was... <laughs> and, and now the non-lawyers outnumber the lawyers on the board. So. <laughs> as, as it should be, Paul. As it should be. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you uh, to the planning board for seeing us tonight. Uh, I'm Hank Half, director of the building design and construction department for the town of Needham. Uh, Chris Heap, uh, will, uh, I will introduce both Chris and Joel, um, but just a brief introduction to um, the Emory Grover project, which will be a complete gut renovation of the existing building uh, for its continued use as offices for the school administration. Um, and they will move out uh, into temporary facilities to Hillside and then move back into the building was originally constructed in 1898 as a high school and is 124 years old. Uh, it was um, constructed 24 years prior to the first draft of the Needham zoning bylaw. There are some uh, existing non-conformances that the town council will mention. Um, it was converted to school administration use in 1947 has remained uh, in that use since then. Uh, in 1986, it was accepted in the National Registry of Historic Places. Um, the project is supported um, by the Needham Historic Commission and um, CPC funding has been approved for the project, which we hope town meeting will approve uh, tomorrow night. The original feasibility study that was completed in 2020 anticipated the addition of a large three-story wing to the back of the building. Um, following uh, much review, um, that wing was removed and the renovation is pretty much entirely enclosed within the existing building. And the architect will review the, some, of those, um, some of those details. Uh, there are several um, waivers which would be requested of the Zoning Board of Appeals and Town Council will review those in some detail. We did um, discuss with uh, the Design Review Board, discuss the project with the DRB on April 25th and I think you've received their comments. Uh, and the architect is uh, re reviewing those but I should note that the DRB was generally supportive of the project. This is a quote, commended the proponent's research and respect for the historic integrity of the building and provided some specific feedback now under review by the designer. So with that brief introduction, Chris, I'll turn it over to you so you can go through and describe the waivers that are being requested. Oh, and you're on mute. 
Thank you, Hank. And uh, thank you to all the board members for, for having us this evening. Um, as uh, Lee and Hank, I think both mentioned, um, we're here before the board tonight for minor project review. Uh, the reason for that is that the, the, the um, the renovation project does not exceed any of the threshold for major project review, but it is an increase in gross floor area, uh, such that the total gross floor area of the of the project after the increase will be 5,000 or more square feet. Um, so that is the threshold for minor review that we are that causes us to be uh, with the board. Um, I'll go through in some uh, uh, some detail the the waivers that we've asked. The ZBA to grant uh, so that we can we can uh, walk you through all of those. The first waiver we've we've requested is of section 5.1.2, which goes to the required amount of parking spaces on the site. Um, we are proposing to provide 62 parking spaces on the parcel, um, where the zoning bylaw would ordinarily require 89 parking spaces. Now that request. Um, may seem dramatic uh, at first glance, but the board should, I think, keep in mind that the current Emory Grover building would require 85 parking spaces under the zoning bylaw. Uh, and there histor have historically been only 65 actual parking spaces on site. So there's uh, a net reduction of three parking spaces, but uh, I think the important point there is that the um, school administration has been located in this building for for literally decades, um, and the site has performed, uh, you know, perfect, perfectly uh, well with those 65 spaces um, for all of that time. Uh, the next waiver that we've requested is of section 5.1.3J, which is setback to parking areas. Um, there is a 10 foot setback required, uh, and there is a four foot setback provided in portions of the parking area on, along the, um, the rear of the site along Oakland Avenue. Um, and I think the reason for that is that the, the lot was created in 1898. The building has been there since 1898. Um, and there are limits to you know, what can be done given that the existing building is being preserved in its current, current form. Um, uh, so there's, there's some, some pressure uh, associated with the size of the lot and the size of the existing building on that lot. Um, in addition, we've asked for a, I guess the next waiver is section 5.1.3K, which is the required landscaping. Um, the bylaw actually requires 10% landscaping um, within the parking area and that 25% of that be internal within the parking area. Uh, the project actually provides 13.4% Landscaping within the parking area, which is more than is actually required, although only 8.4% of that is located internally. Um, and finally, we've requested a waiver of section 5.1.3M, which requires that all parking be located on site or within 300 feet of the parcel. Uh, and the reason for that waiver is just quite simply that there may be instances, um, not frequent ones, but there may be instances where there may need to be offsite parking, either on street or in other uh, parking areas uh, within the immediate area, like the Chapel Street parking lot, for example. Um, so the waiver there is just to acknowledge that there will at, at times be uh, on street and offsite parking. Um, and finally, uh, there are two, as Hank mentioned, there are two existing, three existing nonconformities with respect to the existing building. Um, those are side yard setback. Um, the, the portico on, I believe, the west side is located 11.3 feet from the side lot line where 15 feet is required. Um, that uh, portion of the building, however, is not being um, expanded or moved closer to the lot line. So that is just an existing nonconformity um, that we wanted to flag in the relief. Um, in addition, the zoning bylaw has a maximum height requirement of three stories and 40 feet, and the existing building is four levels and 60 feet. So there's an existing nonconformity there as well. And like I said, um, Chris, Chris, can you can you tell me what what building is on the 
to the west of this parcel? Is, is that St. Joe's or? It's Highland Avenue. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get my bearings. Or That's... if you've got the plan, if you can put the, if you can share the screen and show us where we're talking about. That, that Hank, would be great. Can, Hank can speak to this, I think. He had his hand up. Yes. Please. Um, yep. Yes, Hank. If I may. Yes. Um, and I will share my screen. Uh, it's actually uh, technically to the south, um, and it is adjacent to St. Joe's. That's right. It's thought, the yeah. portico as you as you look at the building from Highland Avenue. It's the portico on the right hand side, right, right. here. Okay. And um, Mr. Chair, if I may comment. Sure. Um, I believe what is immediately there is part of the St. Joe's complex, but it's the perhaps former convent which is now used for schooling for younger children, apparently given that you see the little kids playing out front in their playground. Mm -hmm. And then next to that farther uh, south is the church itself. Yep. Good, I've got my bearings, thank you. Chris, sorry to interrupt if you wanna- Oh, no, please. Um, so those are the two, three dimensional nonconformity, sorry. Um, and as I said, neither none of those existing dimensional nonconformities are being uh, extended in any meaningful way. Um, but the zoning bylaw does speak to the need for a special permit for a non for the reconstruction of nonconforming uh, structures. So we've 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 asked the CBA to grant that relief as well. But again, um, no major extension of those nonconformities, and certainly not any extension that's going to be uh, detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, which is the standard for the grant of that relief. Um, so that's the list of waivers and uh, nonconformity related relief that we've we've applied for. Um, happy to answer any questions, but other than that, I would uh, happily turn it over to Joel to walk everyone through the plans. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Mm. Uh, yes, Jane. Um, I do have a question about the waiver request with regard to parking. Is this the time to ask it? Sure, of course, is willing to answer it now. Yeah, um, I'm um, quite supportive and uh, would indicate so in any correspondence with the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for the grant of the waiver um, uh, to reduce uh, the amount of parking uh, to the uh, 62 spaces that are to be provided on site. Um, and understanding that we have been provided with the parking study uh, that show available on street parking. Um, I don't understand the need for any special condition with regard to uh, parking beyond 300 uh, feet. Um, if, we, if the waiver is granted, uh, then there's no requirement for uh, arrangements for additional parking beyond 300 feet. And I've been concerned right from the start of the presentation on this project that there was originally a proposal for, for parking at um, the um, Stephen Palmer site. And I've always been very much opposed to that. Um, so I don't understand the need for any uh, waiver on parking for 300 feet if, if the waiver is granted. Even, even though it might occasionally be offered because they just wish to accommodate people for a large gathering. Uh, maybe um, uh, Attorney Heap could explain why he thinks that's needed. Sure, I mean, I, I'd be more than happy to have the answer be that we don't, I mean, that we've applied for, for, for more relief than we need. Um, I will say that uh, I th the, the, the list of relief that we applied for was worked up in close consultation with the building commissioner. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't wanna, I wouldn't wanna, um, drop the request, but I can, we can certainly think a little bit more as we proceed from maybe the planning board to the ZBA about whether that is strictly speaking necessary. But, um, but again, that, 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 re that request was, was uh, arrived at with the consultation with the building inspector. Okay, thank you for that um, information and uh, good for now then. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, follow up on that a little bit. So mm -hmm. you're asking for a waiver to allow for additional parking that's more than 300 
feet from the building. Is that what I'm hearing? Is the waiver request? And so I guess my question is, if that waiver is granted, you don't have any plans right now to have a, additional parking. Uh, if in the future um, you were to come, you were to the the town were to decide that it had available additional parking off site, um, would that have to go back to the ZBA or would it come back here or would it just be now because you've gotten your waiver, the town can just go ahead and make arrangements with whoever is willing to lease spaces? Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, Hank can, can jump in and correct me if I misspeak, but I don't think there's any question about us, you know, contracting with any private property owners to, to, to secure additional parking. I think this is, this, this was really just intended to capture a scenario where there may be on street parking or parking within municipal lots that just happened to be located more than 300 feet away from the building. Uh, is that, okay. Is that, is that, Fair Hank. Yes, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yes, yes, um, thank you. In the in the PAR um, traffic analysis, they analyze the number of parking spaces on street within 300 feet of the building. And they did counts to demonstrate that there were um, a number of spaces that were available. And that has been the experience for decades uh, with the existing user. So if they have a larger gathering and parking is filled on site, then people park on street and walk to the building. Um, the uh, town manager specifically requested that we not um, constrain the Stephen Palmer site um, and it, by the way, happens to be a little bit more than 300 feet away from the building. Um, I guess I'm with Jean. I don't understand the need for the waiver. I mean, once you have a waiver from the number of required parking spaces, you don't need this other provision to operate. This other provision was really designed for a circumstance where perhaps you had an ancillary parking lot um, that was under the same ownership and you were proposing dedicated parking spaces on that lot to service this use and it was greater than the 300 foot distance from the primary property. Um, and then the, the board was able to grant a waiver for that. I mean, some of that was done in the case of um, the, the recreational building by Rosemary Lake. So I don't know that the relief under section M is really required, but that's up to you. I think I, I think I'd say we'd be more than happy to to consider that, and if the board, planning board wants to include that in its rec, include in its recommendation to the ZBA the the uh, suggestion that we don't actually need that relief, I, I think we can we can work on that as we as we proceed through um, through this process. Or phrase it as a question to the ZBA. Artie, you have your hand raised. Um, I, I'm Twice. yeah. I'm going to agree. Two ways. <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm going to, yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to agree that I don't understand why we're, why they're looking for a waiver of parking within 300 feet. I mean, that almost comes across as we're looking to, if we need it, to put signs on the street that says parking for the, you know, family, for the school administration building, which I don't think that's the intent, but that's, but I, I, don't, I don't see why it's needed at all, where you're having a, you're having a waiver for the parking on the site. And if the town has other parking spaces that people want to park there, people can park there. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see a need. I don't see a need for that. So, thank you. Okay. Good. Yes, uh, Adam. So I remember this uh, when this was a larger uh, project and there was discussion, a greater discussion about the need of uh, additional parking at the Steve, uh, Stephen Palmer site. And I see that this, the scope of the project has been reduced. I've, as a town meeting member, have seen the, you know, the uh, the documents that uh, that explained a little bit more about the uh, the reduction in the scope of the project. Um, I, I one thing that I have always been concerned about, though, is whether we should add or whether the ZBA should add a requirement that no. Um, 
no employees or uh, guests or visitors shall specifically park on Oakland Avenue and Pickering north of May, that that remains resi you know, residential parking only. Were you, were you thinking, Hank, that if, you know, if there was a need of, let's say, an additional 18 of the 27 spaces when there was some kind of an all-day training for teachers or staff on site, and, and some of that parking was not available either at the municipal lot um, where, uh, uh, on Chapel Street, uh, or behind Chapel Street was, uh, you know, that there were eight, that 18 spaces were not available there. And teachers didn't want to come out every hour or two hours and plug the meters or move their car, if, depending on the parking spot that they're in on the street, down the street. Uh, were you thinking that they would be parking on Oakland Avenue and Pickering north of May? Ahead, Hank. Do you want me to do you want me to pull up? Do you want me to share my screen and show you on Google? I, 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 yeah, and and it was covered. I think all of those streets were covered and counted as part of the available on-street parking. Some of them are two hours. Some of them are three hours. The teachers, if they're having a large training event, have great flexibility um, to leave their cars at the schools, their respective schools, and carpool over which they do sometimes. Um, the, the, the van drivers that drive the children could also pick people up if parking is an issue. But we see frequently that all of the abutters, particularly the school at St. Joe's, um, liberally take advantage of parking on the street and quite frankly, parking in the school department parking lot. And likewise, for funerals, um, all of those spaces seem to be fair game. So uh, that's the way it's functioned for, for years. I think the, um, and it is a downtown uh, area. So public parking um, on the street, even if there is an all day event, um, uh, Teachers could park in three-hour spots, and normally they would um, they would take breaks that would allow them to relocate. But most of their training is either a morning or an afternoon. So, when you say the on-street parking, are you referring to Highland Avenue? There's Highland Avenue. There's Oakland. All of them are posted public parking. There are no meters. Um, two or three hours. And likewise with May. I mean, if that's the practice that's already uh, uh, underway and there are signs, I can't recall what the parking signs are on Oakland and, and specifically Pickering North of May. I have seen when, I, when I've played with my son um, and some other friends on Greens Field and Park on Pickering south of May have seen some of those signs, but I, I wasn't aware offhand what the signage was on Oakland. So if it is public parking in a residential neighborhood on a residential street, then, you know, I, it sounds like we can't really impose, you know, a restriction. Even if there weren't signs on parking spaces on streets, public parking by definition? On public, on public streets? Yeah. Yes, of course, that two yes. or three Unless hours. There are no is, parking is, signs. It's a limit probably to keep people from parking there and taking the train all day. Um, it's a limit, but if there were no signs, you could park there all day. I know, that's, I, I, I understand that. I was just here trying to preserve, you know, the residential character so that, you know, they don't have, you know, um, you know, a hundred cars filing out. Yeah, but I don't think we have the legal authority to do that. How do you say well, everybody in the public can park on Oakland Street except this class of people? Yeah, I understand. Well, I think, Mr. Ch Mr. Chair, 
I think, yes. uh, I mean, I think, I think sometimes we, you know, I mean, I know we have to care about parking. I think sometimes we overstate how much we have to care about parking. And I know there's someone listening in who, um, who, who, to, to agrees that uh, people should use public transportation, bike, walk, and so forth as much as possible. And I 100% agree. Um, and I think the town has a responsibility when they're having an event at the school administration building to encourage people to carpool so they're not overwhelming the neighborhood. And so, as, you, as you're saying, we can't, you know, we can't say certain things. It's public parking. So we can't necessarily say, no, don't park there. But I think the school administration has a responsibility. simply has a responsibility right. to encourage carpooling. Beyond, and encouraging, beyond, beyond, and encouraging yeah. their teachers to, to do that, encouraging their teachers yeah. to use bicycles is great. Yeah. I mean, beyond, beyond that, I don't, think there's, I don't think how much we have to say. I don't think there's much we have to say except for emphasizing the encouragement of what, what you just stated. And right I, would, I would like to get to Jill's presentation, if we can. Um, could, I'm, could I do a wrapping, a wrapping up comment on this? Sure. Uh, uh, just to agree with Lee, that the idea that there's, there's to be uh, a condition that allows parking for the facility beyond 300 feet is only appropriate if it's related to a particular site uh, that is either owned or leased um, by the applicant that the applicant intends to use for parking because the applicant, it's determined that applicant needs that parking. Here we're saying all you need is 62 spaces. There's no particular offsite parking area that's being proposed. Um, any condition about 300 feet is not necessary. I agree. Let's simplify it. Simplify it. Yeah, exactly. Simplify. Uh, so you've been very quiet and very and patient. So I've just I'll been listening. Ahead. No, I agree with what Jean and Lee are saying. So I just wanted to, um, yeah, I, okay. I don't see the need. Thanks. I think, yeah. Okay. I can see. And Artie, I think you're saying the same thing. So I think so. Joel. So thank you for <laughs> standing, sitting there quietly. <laughs> uh, Joel, you need to turn on your unmute. Joel, you're still muted. I had to stop the screen share. Sorry about that. All right. I lost the PowerPoint. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, my name is Joel Bargman. I'm with BH Plus A. Um, this opening slide is interesting because it shows some of the comments that you'll hear from the design review board that um, I thought I would just point out here at, at the opening. Um, we are change, changing this uh, entry to the school and we're infilling that and to confuse it from uh, no longer being an entry the design review board suggested that we study perhaps placing a planter in at the top of the landing. Um, that's a, a good idea. They also suggested that we recess the window a little bit to maintain some texture and depth to that facade. The second issue that this facade shows, and I just want to take advantage of this slide, is uh, the clock. Um, it's, not practical to put the old clock in, although uh, it has been preserved off site. And they had some suggestions of how we could perhaps treat that clock face, which we'll be looking at in the next uh, several weeks. And then there is a uh, rooftop enclosure to house the mechanical equipment. There's no mechanical equipment on the side of the building, and there's actually none on the roof. It's all contained in the attic but we need a little penthouse and, and I'll, I'll discuss that. The, the major change and, and our attorney carefully explained it is we're, we're down a number of spaces, three. And the reason for that is that this entire asphalt is in front of the building is being removed. 
and there are only three special spaces being retained at the left portico, which is the handicapped accessible entry. So um, this was originally suggested by the Historic Commission several years ago. We've been implementing it. It has some advantages for stormwater runoff, as well as uh, it maintains what was a historic uh, view of the building, which was a lawn area along Highland Avenue. The other comment, and I, I'm jumping around here a little bit, you are looking at a site plan. Here is the Emory Grover School. This is the existing entry, Highland Avenue. There, I mentioned there are three spaces right next to the uh, entry, which is the accessible entry point. And um, they suggested that we use some bushes to um, hide these parking spaces from Highland Avenue and that those bushes would um, replicate some of the historic photographs that showed um, bushes in front of, of the building. Um, the primary gist of this was to show you the parking lot that we've been discussing. We're basically fitting the parking lot in the existing footprint. Um, there's a small change of an addition for trash and um, a loading dock. The school needs to bring textbooks and papers and other supplies into the building. Since none of the floor levels of the building are either at the grade of the back or the grade at the front, everything is at a split level. We need a loading dock with a mechanical lift to get the items into the building and out of the building without going through the, the front door, which again would be cumbersome for materials and would require the elevator to be used for loading instead of for um, the accessible entry that it's being provided for. Um, it was mentioned, we, we did a lot of research to determine the existing spaces, the proposed spaces, um, and, and that was, was discussed, I believe, in the waiver discussion. Um, the existing entry off of Highland Avenue is being maintained because there's an easement that uh, you need to preserve for accessing the residential abutters, which are to the east. Um, this is a view now of a perspective view of this corner. I mentioned there's a rooftop enclosure that hides the mechanical equipment and the elevator overrun. Uh, one of the good comments about the from the design review board was to suggest either panelizing this rooftop element or incorporating a cornice that would pull through some of the horizontal banding that's consistent on the Emory Grover building and bring that up into the top in an effort to provide a little bit more detail and perhaps make that roof uh, enclosure a little bit smaller. Um, here you show that infill, you see that infill and where they're proposing, um, we think is a good idea is to put a planter here that will infill that blank wall and make it clear that this is no longer an entry into the building. And then, as I mentioned, we're, we are studying the clock tower. The view from the other direction is shown because from downtown, the point is it's very difficult to see the elevator overrun and the mechanical equipment. The elevator sort of has to be where it is. This is the accessible entry. We're coming in an existing portico, the existing front door, and that happens to bring you just like a 1950s split level house. You're halfway above the basement or the lower level and halfway below the main level of the building. So we have to get right at the front door, from the front door into an elevator, come up half a level, and then we're into the school building. So that, that by definition means the elevator has to be here and not in the middle of the building where it might be um, hidden by the roof. What's really nice on the back of the building, the, the architecture has these openings. Um, these six windows are filled with brick and because um, that was the auditorium sort of gym area of the school, we're able to open those up now and um, we're able to thus create some office space 
um, that can be used um, by the school administration with windows, et cetera. So that, that's an overview. I, I think the, uh, I mentioned the four comments, which we've all taken into account. Um, our plan is to um, show the comments to Lee and the planning board, uh, the planning department, and bring those to the zoning board at our next presentation. But we, we didn't have a lot of time between the design review and tonight to make the full changes. Um, thank you. Okay. Adam, you have your hand raised. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the presentation. Uh, Joel, that's, a, uh, that's an excellent presentation and it, uh, it shows very clearly, it uh, gives us a sense of the scope of the work that you're doing on the exterior. If I could return to the site plan for a minute, uh, which in our packet is page 47, uh, you, you mentioned uh, that off Highland Avenue, there are near the tree, there are three uh, the, um, uh, par uh, parking spaces that are um, accessible parking spaces. And right where your cursor is right now, just a little bit to uh, the, um, a little more to up and a little more to the right, which I guess would be kind of north east. Yes. Are those stairs? Those are stairs. The the these aren't these aren't the full ex these are this <laughs> the technicality I was saying these are the parking spaces that are actually closest to the accessible entry. We think people will use those that have disabilities. The real handicap fully accessible spaces are right here. Okay. But when you use those, you have to take this ramp yes. up to the building. So what we were trying to do is meet the code with these three and then provide another option with these three up front that were just a little bit more convenient. And so where you're so if you if someone were to go by wheelchair from their car off Highland Avenue, those three spots, and they're wheeled up to the portico on the north side of the building. Is that, are there stairs to go from that driveway into the uh, from, into the door, the front door? No, we're thinking the wheelchair folks would come this way, but someone that had a cane or a walker would be able to come in and use this this way if they wanted to. And there's no there's no stairs. That's all the same grade. There's a, there's a step. There's one step there. You know, that, that this is slightly raised the portico. So there's a step right where the cursor is. Okay. Because I, I when you were describing them as handicapped spots, I was a little confused. I did see them on the east side of the building, uh, the three spots. But I when you were describing those three as handicap and I, I thought I saw an elevation in the site plan. I wasn't clear, but I appreciate the clarification and I have no further comment or question. Okay. Um, Natasha, do you have any comments or questions? No, Marty, comments or questions? Thank you. No, the, the only thing I'm curious about is, I mean, I think for the most part, there isn't much we, we have to say about this. This really has to do with maybe something related to Hank or perhaps Joel, and that is, I get the impression this building is going to be certainly very efficient and the heating system is going to be completely different than what it is before. Are those chimneys even going to be used? Well, it's a great question. And the chimneys uh, inside the building, one of the reasons that we were able to um, not use the addition that we had in the previous scheme is we are removing the series of chimneys that's on the back side of the building. We're keeping the two in the middle. They're structurally required, but we're actually gaining eight offices, two on each floor, by removing the chimneys on the back. Um, the building will be 100% electric. It's a heat pump system, but we do have fresh air risers going through the two chimneys that are in the middle of the building. Oh, oh so th those are literally going outside. So they yes. are good. They're going all. So it's, they're not just structurally sound. They're actually CFM required for air exchange required for going outside. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it.
Are you all set? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Great, yes, Jean. Uh, yes, uh, just three questions. Um, I, I noted, and I think it was mentioned and made me remember, yes, I've gone that way. Um, the property is burdened by an easement uh, to the benefit of the adjacent uh, townhouse uh, condominium property. Is that right? And that's shown on the left uh, front corner. Um, is that correct, Mr. Bergman? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hank. Yes, that, that oh, is pardon. correct. Hank. And that, as you may recall, was the prior site for a junior high school. <clears throat> that was sold to the condominium as a developer who then put on the, the uh, condominium. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's the and that's respected the and the driveway is provided as shown on the plan. Yes, and the, it is also a utility easement. Mm -hmm. um, they share uh, some, some of their, uh, their sewer line comes out through that easement as well. Okay. Um, and the, the structure at the very top center of the building that was referred to as a clock, um, I, I always thought it was a water tank. Uh, it's not a water tank then, it never was. Uh -huh. It has that cylindrical look like in, old, in the olden days, they would have pumped the water up there. So okay. what, what, what do you plan for that? It, it, I think a clock that's correct twice a day would be <laughs> an interesting addition there. Well, you sure not refer you sure you're not referring to us? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Hank. Um, well there there have been a variety of suggestions. I know the architectural team is uh, looking at those, but also uh Ann Galati uh requested whether the high school students could have some input as to what that would go into that circle. And you well, may or may not idea. know, but the high school uh, art class designed the logo for the Needham Public Schools. Hmm. Okay, so and, that's uh, an idea, huh? That's an idea, but then you can't change the logo years down the road if you... <laughs> well. And you know, then, I'm, not, I'm still, I'm going to, I'm going to digress, but I take the Mass Pike into Boston every day. And so I see Washington Street in Newton, and there's a great old building that still has engraved in it, New England Telephone and Telegraph. Wow. And, um, <laughs> that hasn't existed for probably 40 years. Well, my, uh, my third question uh, goes back to the site plan and also to the letter from the design review board, um, and particularly with regard to trees and planting. Um, it, it, comments were made. I'm not sure I fully follow the comments of the design review board with respect to the existing conditions, but to what extent uh, in the planning uh, are you responding uh, to the concerns of the design review board with regard to plantings, whether existing trees, bushes, or new that might be planted? Um, am I, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the unfortunate uh, comment for, I mean, the comment about the unfortunate tree removal happens to be for this corner. Um, we can't get that addition in and retain an existing tree that's in this corner of the site. Um, we, we've had uh, landscape architects and we've had the tree warden for the town out to look at this and everyone's concluded that that particular tree can't be retained and there really isn't any other place that we can put the loading dock for the building. Um, so that's the one comment. The other comments were if um, there was a historic image that had some plants. We, we show one remaining bush. Um, they were in this area that the design review suggested that maybe this and this area around the cars received some planting that A would hide the cars from Highland Avenue because we've gone to great effort to clean up the front of the building 
and then B, that would bring back some of the historical character of the front yard that happened to have these large bushes. So we are taking both of those into account and plan to implement those comments. So okay. right here and here. And with regard to the um, uh, rubbish disposal, uh, there is, a, I guess, a line of some kind of what arborvitae or what is what is the line to the right there? It's a kind of tree screen. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. A tree screen and, and a and a hedge that shields it from St. Joe's. That that portion of the is the dumpster. That's six feet high, so it's mm -hmm. not it's the height of a person, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That's, that's all my questions. Great, Artie. Yes. Um, just the request is, I guess I'd like to request if there's any way to put some type of trees, tree, or additional trees or tree back to the south of the building in between these Henry Grover and actually the St. Joe's property. Is that a? I know there's arbor varieties there, but I see what looks like a blank spot. Not that trees have to be in every single blank spot. No, I'm talking a little, just a little, so, not, literally, a little to the south of the building. If you're looking at the building directly to the right of the building, back, right. Down, yeah. you know, right in the why are the why are there no trees being replanted there or something there? If there are big trees, big trees coming down, why is there something being planted? I, I think we could certainly look at that. I'm just yeah. okay. I was just, if something can be, please do. I are you want that to be a comment to the? To the zoning board about plantings, uh, plantings to the uh, south of the building to replace uh, the tree that's coming down. Well, I, I believe it's an appropriate comment to make. I do not know uh, exactly what's happening in there. I mean, right now, it looks like it's a blank spot. It seems appropriate to put a tree back, some type of tree planting there. So I think it's an appropriate comment to make. I think our landscape architect can go out there and, and look, and then maybe. Um, if it's not, if there's an issue, he could consult with the planning department. Hank, Hank, you have a thought on that? Uh, yes, the, on the St. Joe's side, there's a there's a row of um, of pine trees. I think they're hemlocks, and oh. uh, they go all the way across the face of their building. I guess they were put in at the time when that was converted, um, and then toward that front yard, the play area that uh, was referred to, um, there's a large oak tree. Um, yeah. And so we, we certainly will speak to the St. Joe's folks. And uh, if they would like us to add a second row of trees against their existing hemlocks, we, we could do that, um, but it, it may be redundant. Uh, I, I understood. Yeah, understood. Thanks, Hank. Thanks, Hank. And uh, yeah, it may very well be redundant. Thank you, Hank. Appreciate it. Okay. I agree, questions? good good response on that, the existing trees right there. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments from the board? Um, I know this isn't a public hearing, but um, there, aren't, there aren't too many people in attendance. And if anybody would... Uh, would like to speak. Um, yes, Mr. M Mr. Mertz, Mr. Oscar Mertz has his hand raised. Alex, if you would bring Oscar Mertz over. Oscar, you're muted. Think you need to unmute yourself? Another architect to come over. I think we need to be careful about not having the majority of architects on the screen at one time. I don't know why Oscar is having difficulty with the or or Luda. Hi, there. Hey, hey, yes. Hi everyone. Hey, Oscar. Oscar, welcome. Apologies. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you, uh, design team, and 
I was just asking a question if, if this is the appropriate time on the use of the building. Is there going to be um, opportunities since this is being uh, restored with care um, to its glory, which is wonderful. Um, I would just like to know that the community will have access at as, as many opportunities as possible. Is that something that can be um, pursued with the use of the common areas or the shared rooms? Uh, I know the building has been reduced in program somewhat, but I am curious that the community at large will have the benefit of using this facility when it's renovated. Yes, Hank. Um, well, the, the community comes in on a daily basis um, for a whole variety of services um, for the uh, within the schools. So uh, they were as as described at last um, uh, uh, in the town meeting FAQs. Um, they see multiple people coming in, signing up for. Uh, continuing education courses, transportation, uh, coordination with IEP plans, so on and so forth. So there's there's a daily coming and going within the building by many people. Um, the top floor will be a conference. There'll be a larger conference space or a conference room, which could be utilized by the public. Um, certainly, I would think particularly in the evenings, much the same way, it's not as big as Powers Hall. In fact, it's only a third or a quarter that size, um, but uh, it could certainly be used that way, not not just by the um, and not just by the school department. Um, there's still discussion as to whether the school committee will have its public meetings there, or whether they will continue to have hold those meetings at the Broadmeadow School. So in answer to your question, yes, it will be uh, a town public building and utilized, I think, by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, good, good to know, thank you. Okay, Jean, did you have a follow-up on that? Just to follow up on that, I'm very happy to hear that. I recall a few years ago, the League of Women Voters did a study of um, rooms that are available in the town for organizations to have for their, meetings where they're inviting uh, members of the public, for example, for a forum. And it is relatively limited in our town. And the idea that they're, uh, I realize it'd be under the control. Of, I think there's kind of a centralized uh, system for that um, in our town now. Is that not correct? Mr. That, that, is, that is correct. And, it's, and this it's room might be added to that list of rooms, you mean? Yes, in fact, it's, it's managed through a program called School Dude, and um, people can uh, can rent out rooms or reserve rooms in, I think, just about every public building uh, throughout town. Um, it would be more likely that it would be in off hours and or on weekends. Mm -hmm. And like all other public buildings, um, there would need to be a monitor uh, in the room uh, when when that event occurs. And there's usually a fee um, in order to cover the expense of having the monitor. Yeah. yeah, a nominal fee. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That's good to know. Okay. Mr. Merch, thank you. Uh, if anybody else who's in attendance would uh, like to have, make a question or, or ask a question or make a comment, uh, please raise, raise your hand. Use the hand raise button on the... Room. I'm not seeing anybody right now. Give it a couple of more seconds. Was people to choose? Looks like looks like it's not. So um, let's try to recap here as to what comments we wish to make to the ZBA. Um, I think there was a comment about the parking waiver, not. We didn't see the necessity of a parking waiver for, for more than 300 feet from the building. Um, I think there was a question about landscaping on the south side of the building where the current plan doesn't show it. And um, uh, I don't know whether that needs a comment now that it's been explained that the- I don't think it does, Paul. Butter, right. 
It does, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Artie. Um, were there any other comments that, Jean? Yes, I think we should positively state that we support the grant of the waiver, uh, the, of the parking waiver to allow, allow the construction uh, with 62 spaces. Ah, okay. I'll go along with that. I'll agree to that. I'll agree to that too. Likewise. Lee, do we need affirmative votes on these recommendations or can you just informally prepare a letter to to send I need to, to, yeah. I, I need to have you basically this is your recommendation on a minor project so I need for you to basically articulate the um, comments you want me to make and to, and to vote them affirmatively and then I'll put them in a letter mr. mr. chair yes already yeah. all I wanted to say was I know this is a building that's been there historically has been there a long time with the existing parking parking spaces and and I do think sometimes we overemphasize parking spaces at times especially when there's public access a possibility, I mean, public transportation and so forth. But I do just want to keep us in, keep in mind that even though this is a town meeting, a town building, we still treat it like a, like a, um, a private building as far as if we're issuing waivers and so forth. So any other, any other business that comes to us, you know, we, you know, we, there's a certain degree of treating them, everyone the same. So whatever we do here, Kind of follow, you know, falls off under other, uh, falls off under other projects. That's all I really have to say, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Artie. Um, I think you certainly have my agreement on 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 that, and and uh, I've been saying that on on all of my seven years that I've been on this board that um, uh, we have to treat all all applicants who are in front of us, whether whether municipal or private, uh, equally. And I think we do strive to do that. Um, so actually, you mentioned, now that we're talking about parking and automobiles, um, you did mention that there's a bicycle rack. Uh, is that like the minimum number of accessibility for bicycles that we require by our bylaw or are we being a little more expansive on that? Yes, Hank. This is currently drawn, I believe it conforms with the zoning bylaw. Um, and certainly at the, if this were a school, we would exceed that limit, but we haven't observed a lot of people coming by bicycle. Um, it is also easily accessible um, by bus, it's on the bus route, and um, people do come that way, and uh, within walking distance of the train station as well. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, may I ask how many bike, how many bicycle locations are there? Whatever meets the code. Let's see. <laughs> come on, Hank. You're supposed. To... <laughs> it's one for twenty, Hank. Uh, so there's one for every uh, 20 spaces yes yeah. so the requirement uh do you do you have to round round up so where there are more than 60 spaces it's four it's four yes or is it three yeah that's that's what's shown on the plan is four but i think you could park a bike on each side of the of one of those so you probably could accommodate 10 bus uh, eight eight bicycles there I, I'm, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just, and thank you for bringing it up. I think it's something that we just want to keep it. So what keep I've heard so far, and please somebody chime in if I don't have this correctly. The only, I hear that, that we have two recommendations that we want to make to the ZBA. And so um, we'll need a, a motion to recommend to the ZBA that um, uh, we strongly recommend to the ZBA that they approve the parking waiver of 62 spaces. And um, we, you tell me if we still wanna use the word strongly, recommend that um, they not grant a waiver for offsite parking more than 300 feet 
from the site, right. as it is unnecessary. As it is unnecessary, yes. As it is unnecessary. So you want to add the word strongly, or just say we no. recommend? We just recommend. recommend. Just recommend. So moved. Yes, I have it so moved from um, second from Anna Block. I have a second from Artie Crocker. Any further discussion? Just to clarify, so the word strongly is not in there in the first place. We, we recommend the waiver, and we also we also do, do not recommend the three hundred. Uh, Gene, do you want to say strongly for recommending the waiver of, of sixty-two spaces? Well, I don't really think we need to say strongly. Um, okay, then then we recommend. The motion is to recommend the waiver, the parking mm -hmm. waiver for 62 spaces, and that we recommend that they not grant a waiver for the for the offsite parking more than 300 feet as as it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Seeing no further, uh, Hank, did you want to? Do you want to address the um, paragraph J setbacks and paragraph K landscaping in the parking area? I th well. I'm I'm satisfied with the landscaping. I don't I don't think we need to address the setbacks because they're pre-existing non-conforming. That's kind of a pro forma. Yeah. Um, well, we, you know, we have to approve it because we have to approve it, but it's pre-existing yeah. non-conforming. <laughs> exactly. Well, Chris, it, it's, it's, it's the zoning board that's approving it, isn't that correct? Correct. Yeah. 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 Well, when I say we, I I, I mean yeah. Do you mean the, the town? Yeah. yeah. I think I think to Hank's point the the side yards, the, the portico on the south side is an existing non-conforming setback. So I think the, the, and, um, the setback to the parking area being four feet rather than the required 10 is, I, I believe, a new non-conformity, not, not a pre-existing one. Oh, so maybe we should make a decision on whether we're OK with that. I, I'm, I am. I am. I'm with I move. I, I, I move uh, um, uh, for acceptance of the uh, rear um, setback on the south side of the building from 10 feet to four feet. Second. And the, I think there was the also landscape strip around the edge. Is that correct, uh, Mr. It's the It's the amount of landscaping that is included within the interior of the parking area. Mm -hmm. I include right. that's that, that's the waiver because there is not sufficient interior landscaping to meet the regulation and I agree that we don't want to lose the parking spaces that it would require to be lost if we required the the landscaping to be there we're down to 62 spaces I I think they need the 62 spaces I hope they need the 62 spaces not that I'm encouraging people to drive there but I hope that the public will be going there and using the building. And so. And I guess one, one, one last comment is I believe Adam may have referred to the parking setback waiver yeah. as being on the south side. I believe that's actually the east, but east, is that east side. East side. Right. Not on High, the, Highland not Avenue on the is the north side, I believe. Right. Highland, no, Highland Avenue is the west side. Highland yes. Avenue is the west side. So mm -hmm. the four foot is the east side or the south side? It looked to me the, like it was the, the south side. The no. parking, the parking yeah. setback waiver is maybe it's better easier just to refer okay. to it as the Oak, Oakland Avenue side. Okay, that's okay. That's 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 the south side. Okay. No, no that's the east side. I'm sorry. That's the west side. East side. East. No, east, 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 east side. East. That's the east side. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, I get so confused in that area. <laughs> um. And it was said that uh, the design review board's comments regarding planting on the front uh, would be responded to. Does that mean that when you present plans to the Zoning Board of Appeals, it will include those changes? Is that your intention? That's the intent. Yeah. Okay, then I don't think we need to comment on it because it will be presented that way anyway, uh, per the representation made here tonight. Okay. okay, so we have three recommendations, the two on parking that I'm not going to reiterate again, and the third with regard to the setbacks Basically. for the port to go and for the parking area. So, so. That uh, we recommend that they be approved. So that all those yeah. so requests be approved. So, so that's so that's what we're voting on. It's, so moved. Yes, we've, we've already 
You've already. <laughs> Well, now Natasha has seconded the motion that was previously always, they've all been made by Adam and previously oh, then, seconded by Then we don't, I don't need to. Seconded by Natasha. I, thought, I thought everyone was kind of quiet, so I figured. <laughs> Let's Thank move you, Do you want to chime in and, second, and, and third the motion? Or? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I don't I think, need to. I don't need to. I think to it's time all. to take the vote because I don't want to go too late tonight because we're going to go late again tomorrow night for town meeting. Please, please so, do call it. Let's move on. Artie, um, I'm calling on you on the vote. Aye. Jean? Aye. Adam? Aye. <laughs> Natasha? Aye. Was, is that Charlie McCarthy? Yes. <laughs> <that's exactly. laughs> and the chair votes aye. It's unanimous. <laughs> Gentlemen, good to see you all. Thank good you very luck. much. Thank you. Good for luck Thank tomorrow you. night and with the project. Thanks We're very grateful much. Thankful for the hard work that you guys have put into this for such a long time. Thank you and have a good night. Um, I will just take a uh, a quick moment to state that. If don't I don't say the that. score. Don't say the score. I'm recording. You don't want to know? Okay. No, I'm recording the game. Ah, okay. I and had I tickets to the game. My husband and my daughter are there, but I'm here. So just to let everyone know. <laughs> <laughs> You're dedicated, Natasha. I know. I'll accept that for game two. I won't accept it for game seven. If you're going, if you get tickets for game seven and there's a game seven, you go. <laughs> All right. The next item on the agenda is um, the decision um, for the major site plan review number 20. 18-05 with regard to um, the hill the, the, the hillside school 128 Glengarry Road. Um, have you all had a chance to review the decision? Um, I have already met, mentioned to Lee that she had listed yeah. Natasha as being present at that at the meeting and she wasn't. And so the vote, which the decision stated that the vote would be five to nothing and we are going to vote the relief tonight, but it will only add up to four votes. Which which meeting was this? This is uh, on, uh, both decisions were on April 19th. And I, th I think you, you were on- uh, I was out, yes, I was out. Yeah, yeah. So this is, this is, um, a request by the town to remove condition number 3.2 on our permit uh, for the Hillside School, which required that they not use the parking lot for municipal purposes. Because now that the school administration building is gonna be there, they're going to be using the parking lot for municipal purposes. So um, I'm, I move that we uh, grant uh, the requested amendment to a major project site plan review special permit issued by the Planning Board on July 17, 2018, amended June 29, 2021, under Section 7.4 of the Zenitum Zoning Bylaw and Special Permit 2018-05, Section 4.2, subject to the plan modifications, conditions, and limitations in the decision that is before us. Okay, okay we have a motion made by Gene McKnight, and a second by Artie Crocker. Any discussion? Um, hearing none on the relief, um, Artie Crocker. Aye. Gene McKnight. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. The chair votes aye. The vote is four to nothing. Natasha Espada, having not been present for the hearing, abstains. Um, and I move that we approve uh, the amendment to decision. Um, dated May 3rd, 2022, uh, granting the requested amendment to a major project site plan special permit under section 7.4 of the Needham bylaw and section 4.2 of the 2018 special permit. Um, before we do that, I have a, maybe it's a stylistic question that I'd like mm -hmm. to pose to the rest of you in, in finding number 1.5, 
it says NPS, meaning Needham Public Schools, will of course need to use the existing parking spaces. And I thought the words of course really weren't appropriate yeah. for a decision like this. And I'd like to strike those two words. But that, the, that was my only comment to the, to the condition. Lee, do you have any comment on that? I'm fine with that change. I agree with Paul. <laughs> okay. So um, can we change, Jean, can we change your motion with that, with that, one, with that one change? With the one change. And of course, we're uh, changing the quantum vote that's re referred right. to um, as well. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Artie Crocker. Dean McKnight? Aye. Adam Block? Aye. Chair votes aye. It's four to nothing. Natasha Espada not voting for opinion as she wasn't present at the hearing. And we now have a decision in front of us. Again, this was a hearing on April 19th, Natasha not being present. This is with regard to the Learning Tree Preschool. Um, I believe my only comment, and I had already mentioned this to Lee, is that in the, on the first page in the fourth paragraph, um, where it states that the hearing was called to order by the chairperson, Paul S. Alpert, et cetera, it does not list those of us who were present. And so that needs to be, that, that needs to be added. The, the list of mm. the four of us who were here. Um, I see that I have a couple of other markups here. Let me see if they were, yes, so, so similar to my comment in, of course, um, at the top of page three, the last sentence of 1.3 starts with, in essence, Learning Tree Preschool would like to expand its operation. I thought the two words in essence weren't appropriate and should come out. I'm opening, I am I am opening to, I am open to um, here otherwise. Mm. Um, right, extra words, yes. Yeah. I agree with you. And yeah. in 3.1, a very minor typo, there's a space um, on the next to last line, there's a space between 2020 and the comma. So you're gonna just remove that space. Um, And those were those were my only changes. Did anybody else have any comments, questions, changes? No. I just have one. I think I've got to, I've got to remove well remove Natasha from the signature line. That's a good idea. Okay. With those changes, can I have a motion? Um, I move. Oh, first, um, first we have to move the relief, Adam. Exactly. Yes. Uh, so um, oh, I move the. Yes, just getting there. Thank you. I move uh, the relief requested with respect to um, a major project site plan special permit amendment under section seven point four of the. Needham Zoning Bylaw in Section 4.2 of the Major Project Special Permit Number 2008-08, dated November 12, 2008, amended August 11, 2009, uh, 2009 January 4, 2011, August 9, 2011, June 12, 2012, July 21, 2020. And the, uh, and the uh, requested special permit under section 5.1.1.5 of the bylaw to waive strict adherence with the requirements of section 5.1.2 regarding parking. Mm -hmm. okay. I Subject to the conditions limitations set forth in the decision. Subject to uh, uh, subject to uh, the conditions, limitations, and finding of facts and plan modifications set forth in the decision. Second. Okay. Motion by Adam. A second by Artie Crocker. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none. Artie? Aye. Gene? Aye. Adam? Aye. And the chair votes aye. It's four to nothing. Um, <laughs> looking at that, Lee, I see another space that needs to be removed um, at, at the end of uh, one in the hole, just before two in the hole, between 2020 and the semicolon, there's a space. Yeah. Where was that? What, what, what section was that again? Uh, in the therefore, the, the board voted for okay. nothing to grant. Okay. Yeah, in the, four, the fourth line, extra space after 2020. Yep. And do I have a motion to uh, approve the decision, the decision so with the changes that we've discussed? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Adam Block, a second by Artie Crocker. Any discussion? Hearing none, Artie Crocker. Aye. Gene McKnight. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. Chair votes aye. It's four to nothing. The task was spotted not voting as she wasn't present at the meeting. Okay. I'm uh, feeling left out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And you should have been here. Uh, you session. missed a long meeting. Oh, so It sad. wasn't intended yeah. to be a long I've meeting. I've been in plenty of those, Paul. But... <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to soon change those. Yes, already. Well, we've had a lot. We've had a lot going on. Indeed. Artie told me he wants to end every meeting by 10 o'clock. Right, Artie? Now that he's on the board? Artie, <laughs> exactly. I'm with you. Exactly. I agree. Exactly. Uh, as long as we don't make up for it by having 8 a.m. meetings. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes. I mean, we can't start at 5 p.m. either. I think I'll intend to start at 7 sharp. It's fine with me. That means okay. we're... The next ending. item on our agenda is the um, revise the temporary outdoor seating plan to just change some dates to extend it to April 1, 2023, to add uh, today mm -hmm. as, a, as an additional vote and to add April 1, 2023 as the outside date. Lee, I thought, I thought this was already approved by, by the governor. It's Didn't been approved by the, it's that, yes, the governor has approved it, but we're just modifying our policy so that it's consistent with the governor's extension. We, we have been modifying our policy. We created this policy when COVID happened um, and we've been modifying it every right. time the governor extends it. So because he's extended it for another year, we're revising the policy to reflect that change in the, in his, in the law. And then, I, and then did we not like through i thought also the purpose of changing our bylaw last time was to avoid having to do exactly this well i think we changed our bylaw um to allow people to uh, uh provide for their seating outdoors on a permanent basis we didn't know if the governor was going to provide any extensions so now he's provided an extension for an additional year so people have an additional year to get things who, who basically set up at the beginning of COVID have an additional year to convert over and make it permanent through the town's policy. So. But if we're, right. haven't, have, like, wasn't, if this, if, if we, re, if we did not have this policy updated tonight and we approve the grant for permanent relief for the James tonight. The James would be covered. This would be for somebody who hasn't made their application, but still wants to continue doing it for the next year. In other words, I think this is redundant. If no, everybody, because... if everybody who has outdoor seating has applied for permanent, then it's redundant. If there's a restaurant out there who has not applied for permanent, they still have to apply. Then, they, they either have to apply or under this emergency matter, they can continue for another year without applying. Or six so, months. They can actually apply. No, they have until April, April 1, 2023. Right. But our existing, I think our existing policy well, said November 30. So it's really six months relief. But the point is, like, should we... And and did and Lee, didn't you give notice 
before once the bylaw was changed to all the to all the restaurants that they had until November 30 of 2021. We, we met with the restaurants. This change that the governor made is a very recent change. Yes. We met with the restaurants and we told them that the clock was going to start stop for them because it was, I think, actually on April, under the governor's order on April 1st of this year. And we encouraged them to file and to make permanent um, under the bylaw that we had adopted their outdoor dining if they wish to continue it past April 1st of this year. Yes. Um, and, and the number of the restaurants came in and they're in the process of doing that, but not all of them have done that. Um, and in the interim, the governor extended the timeline an additional year. And so um, those folks that set up at the beginning of COVID um, and who have not legitimized their or have not made permanent their outdoor dining will be allowed to continue that. Um, under the governor's order for another year until April of next year. Um, but if they do not, the, you know, if they do not, if he does not extend the order beyond that timeline and they do not get the permits um, legitimately through the town system, they won't be able to continue past that date. And the town is not allowing anybody who has not already set up under the original COVID designation to take advantage of this, um, of the governor's order. We're encouraging them to come through a process that makes it permanent through the town's regulatory system. And let, me, right. and let me make this comment, Adam. The James was in front of us tonight. We're not going to grant the relief and sign the decision for another two weeks. Mm -hmm. Without this amendment, if they continue to have outdoor seating for the next two weeks, they would technically be in violation. With this amendment, they're not in violation because the COVID emergency order is still in place. It's extended until April 1, 2023. And the fact that they have not yet gotten their permission, and actually they haven't gotten their permission be, even after the two weeks, if they haven't gotten the select board permission yet, because we're making our, our permission subject to, to the their ha, ha, having the select board per, permission under the... Uh, uh, alcohol or un under the license agreement, um, they're legally covered by this for, for this short period of time that it's taking them to get their permanent order. Thank you. So, do I have a motion and a uh, to so moved? Thank you. Okay. I have a second. Welcome. Thank you, Artie. So, we have a motion by Adam Block and a second by. Artie Crocker to adopt the changes as presented to us. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, Artie Crocker. Aye. Dean McKnight. Aye. Natasha Espada. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. Chair votes aye. It's approved five to nothing. Vote new select board appointment to the housing plan working group. Do we have a nominee? Uh, yes, um, our, the new member of the select board, newly elected, uh, Heidi Frail, um, has agreed that, uh, to serve on the uh, housing plan working group. Um, I don't know if the select board has, uh, has done a formal choosing of Heidi yet, have they, Lee? Yes, they have, and they've advised us, so this is to formalize that. Yes, and so uh, we'd like, uh, I move... Uh, that we uh, appoint Heidi Frail as a member of the housing plan working group uh, as the select board member. And I second that. Okay, I have a motion by Jean McKnight, a second by Natasha Espada. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll take the vote. Artie Crocker? Aye. Jean McKnight? Aye. Natasha Espada? Aye. Adam Block? Aye. And the chair votes aye, it's five to nothing. And uh, give our welcome, our warm welcome to Heidi Frill. <laughs> uh, we, I will extend our warm welcome. And um, I note that Heidi has already attended a uh, most recent meeting, uh, taking an interest uh, before she was even appointed. Okay, for, for the next item, I will follow what has become our usual procedure and hand the gavel 
over to Gene McKnight to lead the discussion on, on adopting. Yes. I just love reviewing minutes, you know, it's my special <laughs> thing. You live, uh, you live for reviewing minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, uh, what I do, uh, Artie, if you see them in the pack, is uh, red line minor um, changes that just seem to be um, um, cl for clarity or word choice or misspellings or that sort of thing. Uh, but then sometimes there are things that um, are unclear and I'm really not sure what was intended. So it can take a, a couple of minutes just to go through those. Um, so I'll start with the December, the chronologically with December 21, 2021. And in the discussion of um, uh, 1688 Central Avenue, the daycare center, which of course, as you recall, went on for many day, many um, meetings, uh, hearing date after hearing date. Um, in the paragraph in, at the bottom of the page where it says, Mr. Jacobs stated it may not be in the proviso, but is in the court's reading of it. And I think by proviso, he's referring to the State Zoning Act. So if you all agree that that is the proper reference. Is that a Mass General Laws chapter 48, 40? section three. For chapter 48, section three. Should I, instead of state zoning out, should I say yes. it, it may not be in chapter 40A, section three? In in the proviso in, because it does. Oh, in the proviso. There is language that starts provided that. Yes. Mr. Jacobs stated it may not be in the proviso in chapter uh, and spell the word chapter out. Uh, yeah, I would put MGL. Um, MGL chapter uh, 40, 40 A section three. 40. Okay, so um, that, uh, thank you. And uh, now um, the, the very next page at the top, um, a reference to the barn will be used exclusively for the daycare use and not necessarily for storage. I think we can. Um, and I think what was meant is and not necessarily for storage only. Um, I think we can. Is that, what, is that what you think was meant or should I just leave it alone? Mr. Albert stated it has been acknowledged the barn will be used exclusively for the daycare use and not necessarily for storage. But in fact, it was stated that the daycare would be using it for storage. So no, they said that they might have some sort of like art classes in there or something. But they, they were something like that. Going to use it for storage, also, right? Yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I just added only to that word, and not necessarily for storage only. Only. Yeah. Is that okay. All right. So then um, at, the, at the paragraph at the bottom of that uh, same page, um, this is again quoting Mr. Alpert um, and the sentence is, Mr. Alpert stated, the board needs to come up with regulations to allow the project. And I think what you meant was conditions. I mean, we don't come up with regulations. We don't come up with regulations, no. Right. Yeah, so the word is conditions. Um, and then... Um, no, wait, 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 wait. Okay. What was the word? Regulations? Yeah. Yes. We when we talk, we, don't the cases talk about reasonable regulations? It's, it's always preceded by the word reasonable or unreasonable. That's true. The board, the, the permit right. making authority, the board, can issue reasonable regulations. Okay, so Mr. Alpert stated the board needs to come up with, shall I leave it alone as regulations or yes. add the word reasonable? Yes, because the prior sentence says Mr. Block added, unless they have not met the burdens or to demonstrate are, oh, true. the regulations are untrue. All right, so why don't I just leave it alone? Yep. Yes. Okay, I hadn't noticed that other reference. Um, so then, um, 
at the bottom of the next page, and I'm really being careful on um, these minutes, you know, to make sure we are careful it. about them. Um, at, at the very bottom of the page, um, it's talking about setbacks. Um, Mr. Alpert commented, the setbacks there, the setbacks there are because that is where the builders decided years ago to build the houses. And I thought it, it, it might have been referring to um, Mr. Alpert commented the setbacks in section four and the, the reference in the prior sentence to section four, meaning section four of our own bylaw. And then, so there's a sentence referring to section four, then Mr. Alpert commented the setbacks there are because that is where, and all I, all I was doing is instead of saying the setbacks there is to say the setbacks in section four right. are because, okay? Um, then Mr. Jacobs, um, I don't know why the whole sentence is in yellow because um, I only changed one word, um, but I, it's, hmm. Well, sure said the board. Mr. Block noted that it would make it, oh, excuse me. Um, I simply thought that the two sentences was just, were unclear, but I don't know what to do. I can just leave them alone. Mr. Jake, the two sentences I found to be unclear were, Mr. Jacobs stated the board could find the setback needs to be more than 64 feet, but he does not know how to make that clear. I remember that comment. Mr. Block noted that would be making a condition based on a subsequent condition, and that cannot be done. Is that what was said? I'll just leave it alone, but I don't understand it. I recall making that comment, but that that, but in reference to something else. Um, because this was something that, that I think our town council had discussed um, that we can't have a condition on a subsequent condition. Um, Based on a subsequent event. Right. Yeah, based on a subsequent condition is kind of based on a subsequent condition event. based on a subsequent condition. No. No. Um, it was. It was. Yeah. It was. I. I. I think the discussion was about the, the traffic, and we had a condition about traffic, namely whether or not to have the, the the, the police detail. And then whether we were going to require it to continue was going to be based upon a, a further traffic study. That's actually not what this, this paragraph relates to the setback and the front yeah. setback. Yeah. It's all about the setback, right? If it's all about the setback. I don't remember what subsequent condition there might be where, where we were talking about the right. setback. Right, exactly. So I would strike that, that the second Just setback. strike the sentence that begins yeah. with the block. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't meant to be there. What Adam said, I, I think when Adam said it, we were talking about the parking, the the uh, traffic guard. That's right. But rather than moving that sentence, um, strike strike it. It here. because I think our our note ticker is pretty good about following, yeah. you know, being careful. Um, and, and but I'd leave it. I'll leave in the sentence that says Mr. Jacobs stated the board could find the setback needs to be more than sixty four feet. He does not know how to make that clear. I mean, that's I, what he said. That's what he said. I, I guess that's what he said. So we'll, we'll it's just not going. clear what he meant about not being clear. Right. Um, so then uh, now we move on to breweries. So um, uh, in the first paragraph, uh, and the idea. person that's who is speaking here. Um, Mr. Alpert stated that Mr. Jacobs said at the select board meeting, so this is probably following on to something Mr. Alpert said, um, 
And so what I did is I brought together the two sentences so that it runs on. And so it reads, Mr. Albert stated that Mr. Jacobs said at the select board meeting, he was not sure we need to have a, a zoning amendment stating his opinion that under the current bylaws, there can be breweries. All right, now what I proposed adding to that, mm -hmm. you could leave it alone, but I proposed adding if deemed similar to already allowed uses, because that's what our bylaw requires uh, yes. the finding to be. Uh, should I add that or leave it alone? Well, that's not I what think... Marty said. But I, but it's but he but, but that's what he meant because, because he and Gene I think were responsible for adding that specific provision in the right. zoning bylaw. Correct. I think I think that that's a reasonable addition. Yeah. Okay, if deemed yeah, similar, I'm, I'm 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 okay with putting that in. With adding that, I'm, I'm, I'm adding those words, words. just for clarity because that's that's right out of our zoning bylaw. Yeah. Okay, I think we're finished with that one. That was a lengthy one. All right. Um, so you want to make a motion? So I make a motion? I move that we uh, vote to accept the minutes of December 21, 2021 with the changes shown in red line and the further changes uh, discussed tonight. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay. Can I do it even though I wasn't part of half, half of the meeting? I think Adam should do it. Yeah, Adam seconded. So Gene, Gene made the motion, Adam seconded. Um, mm -hmm. we'll call the roll. Of course, Artie, you weren't there, so you don't, you don't vote. Gene McKnight. Aye. Um, except as relates to, uh, 1688 Central Avenue, Natasha Espada. Aye. Anna Block. Aye. And the chair votes aye. So the minutes are approved. Okay. So then we have, oh good, this is easy. Um, the minutes of January 4th, 2022. Now you may have gotten the red line rather late in your packets, but there are no uh, questionable changes. There's just uh, a few, you know, typos and words for Claire adding, adding of comments, um, adding, for example, PA, what does that mean, parent? physician's assistant, you know, that sort of change. Um, so um, I move that we accept the minutes of January 4th, 2022 as uh, with the changes shown in red line. So moved. Um, Jean made the motion and Natasha seconded. Um, I'll call the roll. Jean McKnight. Aye. Natasha Spada. Aye. Anna Block. Aye. The chair votes aye. Four nothing approved. Okay, so now we're uh, on the minutes of uh, February 15. Um, and uh, there's a couple of uh, questions I have on uh, one on page two. Um, and this is the discussion having to do with the dumpsters at uh, Needham Gateway. Um, and uh, right in the middle of the page is a paragraph that um, quotes Mr. Jacobs. Um, and the last sentence of that paragraph is Mr. Jacobs asked when the construction dumpsters will be put in. Um, and the last sentence says, Mr. Jacobs asked if the construction dumpsters will be in a couple of months and was informed yes. Will be installed. Will be installed. Yeah, I wasn't sure what it was meant, and I have written in gone, but of course, in context, it is installed, right? Okay. Um, then, um, then um, a paragraph, the second last paragraph on page on the second page that begins John Nagosian, um, and he's. Um, he, he identifies himself as representative and major manager of all the abutting properties. Um, in the last sentence, um, it, it, Mr. Jacobs stated, Mr. Moskowitz, that, that is the owner, conceded the dumpsters have been there about, then 
it's it, it was not clear the number of years. I think it was 15. I think in context, it was 15 years. Um, now, why did I think that? It is 15 years, Jean. Yeah. 15 is that, the number that I remember too. Yeah. So I think there was maybe a typo. I've, yeah. Uh, yeah, it said five years, and I think it should have been 15. No, no, 15. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, that's page two. And then there was one thing on page on the fifth page. Um, um, and this is the discussion of um, Emery Grover, uh, prior discussion of Emery Grover, the very last paragraph. Um, at, oh, yes, um, they're talking about setbacks. Um, um, and it says now, it now says a non-apartment building, which of course this is a non, a, no, not an apartment building, but it's in an apartment zone, by the way, Emory Grover is in, a, in an apartment zone. A non-apartment building side yard setback is 15 feet under 4.3, but I don't think, but it should be 4.73. That's um, fine. That's the good. prior sentence has 4.73, and I checked it, and I think it is 4.7. We do have a, se a section 4.3, but it doesn't seem to have to do with setbacks. Okay, so we change that. All right, so uh, I move that we accept the minutes of February 15th, 2022, with changes shown in red line and uh, additional changes as discussed tonight. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Gene McKnight and a second by Adam Block. Any further discussion? I'll call the roll. Gene McKnight. Aye. Natasha Spada. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. Chair votes aye. Artie Crocker abstaining because he wasn't a member of the board at the time. Mm -hmm. And then again, I think February 25th uh, minutes, I think they weren't in the original packet, but I think um, Alex said she added it. Um, and February 25th, um, Uh, this is um, on the second paragraph. Um, it, it, it says Mr. Albert uh, took a roll call vote, et cetera. The usual language. All attendees are present by video conference. He reviewed the rules of conduct. And he noted the agenda for this meeting includes one minor modification request and there would be public comment allowed on that. Uh, all I noticed there actually, we did not get to the minor modification request uh, during the meeting, um, but I should that, and I didn't go back and check the agenda. I think it was probably on the agenda, but it then- It was on the agenda, and so I stated that, so. Yeah, yeah so we'll leave it alone. I it, leave it in. Because, yeah. Gene, that, because Gene, that was uh, Paul's and Claire, the usual remarks. Sure. Of the opening right. that were the- all right, and then uh, in the first paragraph on the discussion of, um, this is 1688 Central Ave again, uh, the first paragraph, um, middle of the paragraph. At, at the last meeting, the board discussed the restriction of further subdividing the lot. You remember we had a lot of discussion about having a restriction, having to do with further subdividing the lot. Then the sentence says, they have since learned an easement would enable a subdivision of the lot. What would we refer to a roadway easement? What kind of easement would we have been referring to other than a roadway easement? I think you're right. If there was an easement, it would have to be for a roadway. Yeah, because an easement itself just alone doesn't enable the subdivision of a lot. Right. It had to be a roadway. It had to be a roadway layout. Yeah. So since the word, the word easement, I'm not, I'm not sure the word easement was correctly used there. Yeah. Well, that's why I proved the clarifying word a roadway. Yeah. Easement. Does a adding the word roads roadway does that help or should I yeah. say we have since? What should read, I do? Read the sentence back to me again, please, Jean. They have since learned. Um, 
Well, I'll read the two sentences together. At the last meeting, the board discussed the restriction of further subdividing the lot. They have since learned an easement would enable a subdivision of the lot. And I proposed well, inserting the word roadway. Learned. Are we talking about 1688? Yes. Should I just leave the sentence I out? I, I don't remember any of this. We did. We did. I, I, I think I brought it up because I was concerned about. Yeah, but we didn't recently learn anything. I mean, we, we, we knew that in order to subdivide the lot, you have to, you'd have to put a road in. Yeah, and, um, we, and it does. And then we grant is, waivers on, on you, you know, the, the uh, sub, subdivision um, rules that we have for roads. We wind mm -hmm. up, you know, allowing them to be narrower or, you know, things I like recall, that. But... I recall having a fairly substantive conversation because I think, Lee, you said that there was a likelihood in the event the thing was subdivided in the back that the daycare lot could be or would likely be non become non-compliant. And I, I should say that um, these these are statements attributed to you, Adam, in that yes. paragraph, right? M Mr. Chair, may I ask something? This is more from this is simply for my edification. Sure. Can can there be a driveway driveway easement where there's simply a shared driveway going back to you know for, it doesn't have to be this lot any particular lot where there's a driveway easement of some kind? No, that being have well, when does a driveway become a roadway? Exactly, that's the um, conundrum. In order to generate their frontage for the back, if you were going to generate frontage in the back, you'd have to do a layout under the subdivision control on the back lot would have to have frontage. In order for it to be a yeah. buildable lot, so I don't know. And you can't have frontage on a driveway. You have to create a road. The frontage know, is only derived way. under the subdivision control law through the layout of a street. Which is to say, you need a, a roadway laid out yeah. under the subdivision control law. Mm -hmm. So should I change that? We, they have since learned a roadway laid out and approved. Under the, it's the, it, it, it's the phrase they have since learned that bothers me. We've already, we've always known this. It's not like we learned something new that we didn't know before. I might have. That might okay. have been. <laughs> In but, your prior ignorance. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't mind you know, admitting it. I, I didn't, I mean, I was, was it, I was what, learning. What, what, was, it, was it the neighbors that were saying that? That they, that they had learned that they thought that you know, an easement could generate um, a buildable lot in the back, and we were respond. You were responding to that. Was does well, they mean neighbors have this, had this could be because it refers to the paragraph refers to Adam thanking Holly Clark, Joe Breezy, and the attorney for Greg Darish for their submissions. All submissions will be included, and all comments have been reviewed. Um, and then at the last. Um, Although the first, you know, sometimes two subjects are put in the same paragraph. I try sometimes try to separate them, um, but I think the the thanking of um, of these people didn't necessarily have to do with that issue. Um, no, it was general. It was yeah, general. there was a general thanks to them for their comments, and then, in fact, let's make it a different paragraph. Paragraph. At the last meeting, the board discussed the restriction of further subdividing the lot. Um, I can leave the sentence out that we're discussing and, didn't, and just move on to say, he asked town council about this. I, I think I should say Mr. Block, because he's the one who had been speaking. Mr. Block asked town council about this. He read town council Christopher Heath's response. We don't need that sentence about an easement if I, we wanna just leave it out. Okay. 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 Let's just, is it, otherwise we have to expand it now to all kinds of words that weren't uh, in necessarily said at the meeting. Okay. That's an easy solution. So we're going to put in a paragraph. Or you got that, Lee, to separate the two parts of that paragraph that I, I have it. I have it. First, to just the thanking, and then the one that begins at the last meeting, the board discussed the restriction. That's a new paragraph. And we just take that sentence out. 
Okay, we're almost finished. Let's go to page four. Um, um, now, what we're talking about on page four, oh my goodness, this is still 1688. Uh, uh, Mr. Jacobs noted, uh, this is the third paragraph on the, on the fourth page. Mr. Jacobs noted the question of the setback. The members have already said no to enough that they cannot say yes to the letter. I have no idea what, is he, is he talking about the letter that came from the attorney that I was so. referred to as a settlement letter? Um, maybe. That makes sense by context. Had we but received again, we could time? just leave that out because it, it's, it, then it would read, Mr. Jacobs noted the question of the setback. Mr. Alpert feels the setback should stay at 135 feet. Ms. Ms. McKnight stated her concern. Um, we don't really need that sentence. Uh, it's kind of, I just don't know what it means. The members That's have already enough. said no to enough that they cannot say yes to the letter. It seems out of place in context. Oh, 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 because, because in, 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 um, in Evan Huber's letter, he said that they would agree to larger, they would agree to an 80 foot setback if we agree to all these other things. Mm -hmm. And we had already discussed a lot of those other things and said no to them. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's why Marty was saying in the letter, and maybe put the word settlement before the word letter, or okay. Mr. Huber's settlement letter. Yes, to uh, Mr. Huber's settlement letter. Letter. Okay, so uh, with that, um, I move that we uh, uh, in, uh, accept the minutes of February 25, 2022 um, with the red line changes uh, shown in, in the revised draft and with the changes uh, discussed tonight. Before we take the vote, well, Adam, are you seconding the motion? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, so we have a uh, motion by Gene McKnight and a second by Adam Block. Um, all that we've discussed are changes to the 1688 portion. Are there other things in the minutes that that Natasha is voting on, or is it all 1688? It's um, it's all 1688. And Natasha's um, not going to Natasha's not going to part participate in this vote. Right. So, I'll so take everything the else was just there were no minutes, there was no correspondence, yeah. nothing else. Okay. So, um, any further discussion? Gene McKnight? Aye. Adam Block? Aye. Chair votes aye. Natasha Spotter and Artie Crocker are not voting as neither one of them were at the meeting. Okay. So now this is the last set. It's March 1, 2022. And um, just one question on the fifth page. Um, and what we're talking about here is, let me just go back. Um, this is uh, the, oh, Kendrick, this is the uh, changing the 142 bed skilled nursing facility to 50 independent living units at uh, Wingate. Mm. Um, and on page five, um, in the first full paragraph, um, Mr. Jacobs is quoted, and then Mr. Feldman um, on the applicant team. You're um, right, Dean, it should be segment. An segment, segment, yeah. yeah. This yeah. is an uh, opportunity to serve an underserved department. Yeah, it, it should be segment. Okay, so I just didn't know what, what word to use. So with that, with that uh, change, um, I move that we accept the minutes of March 1, 2022 with the red line changes shown in the draft 
and with the one change um, that was discussed tonight. Do I have a second? Second. Motion by Gene McKnight, second by Adam Block. Any discussion? Hearing none, Gene McKnight. Aye. Natasha Espada. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Artie Crocker not voting as he wasn't at the meeting. Wasn't on the board. We're getting so <laughs> caught up on our minutes. This is just Unbelievable. terrific. We're up to March. Thank you, it's Gene. Only May. Yeah. I'll take, the, I'll take the gavel back, Gene. It's Please. 9 before, Mr. Chair. <laughs> We're almost at 10 o'clock and report from planning director. Um, well, I included in your agenda package a copy of the town's response on the environmental notification form that was right. you know, filed by um, um, the uh, for the property for the Highland Science Center at 557 um, Highland Avenue, which includes essentially the comments from the BPW department and the chat in the comments that I worked with um, Rebecca Brown on preparing from GPI on the traffic piece. Um, also, were, you, were you watching town meeting last night? I was until the budget was completed and then I stopped. Okay. I oh, don't somebody, remember. somebody, somebody made a comment about Muzzy being renamed or something to 557 yes. and someone said it would never <laughs> yeah, happen. Yes. yes, I heard that. <laughs> and so now we have a different name. Island <laughs> Science Center. That's yeah. what this. Yes, that's what they're calling the project. And I, I think so. Yeah. That kind of assumes that their tenants are going to be. Yes, because they're building it out. Well, that's what the site plan says. Lab. Yeah, but I, I, I thought I had read that that they're kind of hedging their bets in case they don't get those. Uh, those tenants are also building it so that they can just have offices. Yes, that's what that's, that's what that I've been told by Mr. That's what they're going to call it, huh? Well, yes. I'm, I'm going to refer to it as the Muzzy site. I did read, didn't I read that um, they're going to um, design the buildings with such heights that could be used, you know, the, the height of the stories, that it could be used either for labs or, so, or, or office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just a comment on it is that um, the, the, there was some place where Kate Fitzpatrick stated that the the parcel was being used as as a dealership, and the dealership is long gone. Those buildings have been raised, R A Z E D. So I, I don't know that that I don't know that that sentence that that just struck me. I I, I went that sentence isn't true. <laughs> it was. It was. It was no, but she didn't say was. She said is. Yeah, currently is it so as opposed to saying previously. Well, um, I I guess I'm res I'm responsible. I wrote the letter for her, so I I take ownership of that. <laughs> is there anything remarkable that um about this about what's referred to in here that we should really keep in mind going forward? I assume it's going to be part part of our package for the June. For the it's, June yes, and, and GPI is basically going to be is doing the review now on the site plan, and I'm just, I'll, I will get a revised version, I think, of this letter. Um, I think one of the one I think one comment that was raised by the engineering department is that the plan that they presented shows basically anticipates you know roadway widenings at the intersection of Highland and Gould. Um, and those, those, th that widening is actually extending onto the Highland Science Center project. And I think it was basically being shown as an easement. And that really needs to be part of the layout of the street, which could have an impact on the FAR, it could have an impact on the setbacks, you know, which might require some adjustments um, in terms of how they presented the site plan. Uh, Lee, are you speaking of the takings that were already made by the state in connection with the highway work recently? No, I'm talking about the improvements on Gould Street that would be required to facilitate this project. Uh -huh. um, do you want to speak so, to? Do you want to speak to the to their engineer? 
Uh, that was just, no, that's a, we've made that comment to them. I mean, like Jean asked me if there was anything in the comments yeah. from the town in this letter or in the comments that GPI had yes. made in, in these documents that I would want to call your attention to. And I think that was, I think that was one that I wanted just to make sure you were aware of. Good. But I, so the hearing is the hearing, you know, is planned. So we should not be discussing the project because it's been noticed for a hearing and we've accepted the filing. So the hearing is set for June the 7th. Um, and it's a high, we're doing a, our first hybrid meeting, fingers crossed, um, at Powers Hall. So. Excellent. So um, speaking of doing hybrid meetings, after that, um, what are we doing? Are we doing hybrid meetings? Are we doing them from, from the PSAB? Are we going to have to move our meetings to town hall to, to do hybrids? What's going on? I think that we, at least initially, um, if we're going to do hybrids, I think we should be doing them in a larger space. Um, and so I would prefer to do it at Powers Hall. Can we get Powers Hall? for? Um, we've already, we've, we've, we've reached out. Yes, we have, Alex has arranged, at least in the summer, I think where we have the option of Powers Hall. Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, in July and August. I I think so. I would have to check with Elisa, honestly. I, I was not prepared. To so Sorry, but I, we we so, were trying to, because we I was concerned that if we continued Muzzy, um, I, if, you know, after this June meeting, I wasn't sure when we would continue it to either July or August. I think we set it up so that the Powers Hall was going to be available during the summer um, so we could run a hybrid meeting. Yeah. For, yeah, for, we're gonna uh, yeah. to, we're gonna for our to summer be, meetings. Yeah, we're going to have to be in Powers Hall for the... But what if, for, not, for, for meetings that aren't going to potentially draw as much of a crowd, go on a go forward basis, are, are we not set up at PSAB to have, to do hybrid? Yeah, we can do it. We can do it, I think, with, a, with an owl. But the question is, you know, what's going to be on our, on our agendas? How many, you know, who's going to, how, how, how large is it going to be? Um, and so I just wanted to make sure that in July and August, I had spaces reserved that could accommodate a lot of people. I understand. Thank you for, thank you for doing that. When do we, when do we, um, change the leadership of the planning board? I think at our next meeting, it's, it's the first meeting after town meeting. And yeah, so I'll, town, put the reorder, town, I'll put, I'm expecting town meeting to be over. After, certainly after Monday, I think after Monday, right? Maybe it'll go to next Wednesday, but I doubt it. No, but even still, that's a special town meeting, okay. and also there, uh, you know, we're not we're not uh, presenting anything this time, so it's. I mean, the annual town meeting might even be over tomorrow night. I'm hoping it will be. We we might have nothing to do for next next Monday except doing a consent right. vote on, on, on the four articles. Right. right there. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Um, okay. uh, Jean, do you want to update them on the survey that's out on the housing side of things? Oh, um, yes. We, we sent out, um, was it Last week, yeah, last okay. week, um, we finalized and sent out a survey from the Housing Plan Working Group. Um, I, was, I was saying that the responses are due um, on um, um, the, 9th, the 19th, that's a Friday, I think, 19th of May. Um, and uh, is, it, is it a Friday? Um, no, it's a Thursday at noon. Um, and then we'll be evaluating that uh, survey at that uh, at the subsequent meeting of the uh, housing plan working group, and um, we're hoping to get a, a huge, um, you know, response and a really outreach uh, to all the groups in town uh, that might uh, care to uh, have a say about this. I haven't if, seen any, if you're either. active in any groups whatsoever, please forward the link. You know, um, such as. Neighborhood, neighborhood neighbor association, um, whatever groups you think might further distribute it. Thank you for suggesting that. Uh, 
and I'll, I'll talk to the board about it. Uh, I haven't seen a copy of it myself. What's the, oh. so what's the plan? Where are you with, with, where are you, where is the, the subcommittee, the select committee on the housing plan? Where are we in the process? Uh, well, we what had. Are you, what are you? What you know? Where, what to, What are you studying? You know, are you looking at doing a two-stage recommendation? Are you looking at any early recommendations for changes in the zoning bylaw? Where we're we're, we're not likely to have um, a draft um, housing plan um, and have a public meeting to um, present it and get comments on it um, until October. Um, th th right now, um, the, I guess the, the 2020 census data is finally um, set. You know, for a long time, it was only um, not quite Coming final. Up. And so Karen Sunderberg has made a very good start on the housing plan as far as um, chapters with all the data about housing need, um, based on the 2020 census and other data. Um, and so she made a very good start on it. Um, but now, you know, the housing plan working group through its listening session, uh, which was uh, several months ago and through its recent um, um, workshop um, has come up with uh, ideas of what we should do uh, to address our housing needs. And then, put a lot of those ideas are the ones that were most often mentioned in this survey and we're looking for the response and then we'll take into account that response. Now, we also have to take into account um, the new, um, M the MBTA the communities uh, law and whatever comes up as the final regulations. Unfortunately, we won't know what those final uh, not they're actually not referred to as regulations, they're referred to as guidelines that DHCD is coming up with. And as you may know, if you followed this at all, the guidelines were very aggressively interpreting the word what is reasonable um, in ways that, um, you know, the Mass Municipal Association had uh, some, a lot of comments on and uh, our select board sent, our, our town manager sent a letter of comment a, a, a really focused on Needham being characterized as a, a bus service community when we're really a commuter rail community, clearly. Um, and um, there's a big difference. If you're a bus community, 20% of your existing, and I, I think we have about 11,500 un, housing units in our town, 20% would have to you know, zone to allow for 2,500 or something new housing units. Um, within a half mile, or at least uh, most of it would have to be within a half mile. Very unreasonable standards. On the other hand, if we we're characterized as we should be as a commuter rail community, would our, our standard would be 15%, which is a little more achievable. Um, and then the other thing is um, the time frame. I mean, they're expecting towns to respond with zoning changes uh, at their very next uh, next year, um, and that's just not possible for towns to act that quickly. Um, Dean, Dean, if I may ask a question. Yeah. Is there any sentiment on your committee to just decide to not, to not take part? Not on, certainly not on, uh, expressed by anybody on the housing plan working group, nor on our board of selectmen, our select board, excuse me. Um, we've been cooperative. Uh, Lee can speak to that, to all the efforts the town has been making to uh, understand what needs to be done to comply rather than coming up with, with objections. Is, is it, Mike, am I saying that right, Lee? Yeah, I think, I think the town, the, the, the sentiment that I'm hearing, the policy direction that I'm hearing is that the town wants to um, come up with a plan that's responsive to the new law um, and to kind of uh, accept its regional responsibility. Um, that's, well, I think let, that's pretty. Let me just put in my personal opinion that I am in full accord with the objectives of the intention of this bill. And I would love to see Needham do what it can to have 
there's this this transit housing um, in somewhat of the form that the statute um, uh, is is requiring. So, so Mr. However, Chair, the the the, um, uh -huh. the penalty for not adopting this statute is not so onerous. It's, it, it's, it's not getting certain amounts of money from two state agencies where we didn't get much money from them in the past to begin with. And there's no guarantee that we'll get much money from them in the future. I agree with all of the sentiments, but I think everything that the statute requires has to be a right should be done by special permit. We should, I would like, to, my personal opinion is that the town adopts the, the sentiment of it and we go forward and we give up the, the pie in the sky money that we might never see anyway and go forward to, to have the kind of housing that this statute envisions, but do it by special permit and not as of right. I think giving the developers all of this as of right is 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 too much leeway for for what the developers can do in putting this housing together that's my personal opinion and i'm and 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 so i would say the the penalty is not much of a penalty and let's let needham should do what needham wants to do not what governor baker wants us to do well, and, and I want to add to this that um, we had a community housing workshop with community members that attended on, on March 24th, and the number one, 69% of the group wanted to participate in some way in this MBTA community initiative. And we have uh, different subgroups that are looking into it in different ways. The second thing that was really important um, was 59% of them supported Needham Housing Authority plans to renovate and expand their housing units. And then the, the, then the next one that was really important was reviewing and changing zoning to allow for different types of housing in different parts of town. So as you mentioned, I think there's a lot of interest in these things happening, but I think, I, I think it needs to be re revised per zoning. And I think that there should be special permits. To, I mean, um, it, it should not be as a right. We should, we should kind of take a look at um, how all of these different zoning changes right um make a difference so that we can review it by special permit because i think it's right. it's, it's complicated it's not it's not but if it's by special permit and not as the way i read the statute and it's been a while since i looked for at mbta it, community i read the statute that says if it's not as of right you're not in the statute you don't get the money from the right but from that, the that's right paul that's, that's not right. a matter of the guideline overreaching that that's is right, right, right in the statute. That's right in the statute. That's the MBTA communities, but there's review and changing zoning the internal you know, that we can do for the town that, that we can set any type of standard. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. I agree, Paul. That that we want to, you know, we have a principle that we need to look at, but by right, um, I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't see that. I mean, obviously, it depends on what percentage we're looking to accomplish. Because I mean, there, there, there's right. where the rubber meets the road. What percentage are we are we really shooting for? But we will, and as Natasha points out, we yeah. do need to change our zoning bylaws in order to yeah, allow this kind are, of housing yeah. in town. Some but, of them are more than fifty years old, right, Lee? I but mean, the, yeah. but the substantive element to affect any significant change, the purpose of which is to enable it by right and not by special permit. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah. And, I mean, that's, that's, all, that's, was, all, that's all well and good, but. You know, if we if we have this large swath of land, says by right, all of a sudden, and who knows, you know, who knows what the hell's going on. And I and I agree with I agree with Paul that we we in principle we want we want to we want to look at what's going on. We want to try to accomplish a lot of the goals. But, you know, just to just to let it open and let up let developers do whatever the hell they want to do. I'm not in favor. Well, of it. It, it, well. We um, on this subject, I encourage you to read the report that was done. Lee, the report I'm referring to was the one that was done by town staff um, that on, on how we might comply. Is that right, 
That's yes, I yeah, I, I think I, I took a look at you know what the existing zoning was and what the rules were and counted all the units and what the shortfalls were and what revisions might be made to bring us toward compliance. And, and there is a blueprint for compliance that the staff put together. And um you could you could you perhaps send a link on that sure, to I'll, the, I'll I'll send that out to the members because I think it's really worth le worth reading that. Yeah. Um, and and uh, site plan approval is under the law under the new law um, something that can be applied. Um, but you're right, of course. Yeah, site plan approval. But the yeah, week I don't, I don't. I don't know that we're allowed under our in, uh, under our bylaw site plan approval to say you. It's going to bring too many students into our schools, and you know if you put in all of these units in the next five years, you know, multiple units in the next five years because the builders can do it as of right, um, we're gonna have the schools to support it. That's just one example. Infrastructure is another example, but I think site plan, we might be able to look at infrastructure in, in terms of site plan review. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the the, the burden on the sewer system and the water system and the roads. Um, uh, I'd have to look at our site plan review criteria again as to whether that's something that uh, uh, we can we, we can limit by site plan review. But remember by site plan review, it's, it's similar to 40A. You can't deny it. I understand you. Yeah. And, and, and I only... I only mentioned, I didn't mean to get off on a sidetrack talking about the MBTA Communities Act, but um, I think it, it, it just affects the housing plan. It's, we, we really do uh, have to wait until the guidelines are finalized to know what it is the state is wanting us to do so that we can decide whether or not and to what extent we are how we propose to, uh, to respond to that. And that would be part of the housing plan that then would be presented in the fall for public comment. Um, and so Gina, that, affects, that affects our timing, you see. And Gene, am, am I understanding correctly that, that it's being reviewed right now and that might be modified to not be completely as of right? Is that correct or? No, because that's in the statute, unless they go back to the legislature. You can't change the statute, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's where we are with that. And, um, you know, we've been working hard, haven't we, Natasha? Yeah, we have so we have subgroups and their work is going to be done at the end of at the end of May so that we can start getting together before the summer so that then we can regroup again at the end of the summer and um, move it forward through October for October. So I know it's 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 a lot of bits and pieces, um, but it, we've had a lot of participation, which is really great. And I'm hoping that the subgroups feel like they're, um, you know, th their work is really valuable. So hopefully, um, you That's know, great. we can get together and, and, and finish and, that and work. There's nothing, I don't, I don't believe there's anything in there that pertains to the type of housing and this density of housing, but I don't think there's anything stating the type of housing. Is that correct? You know, like 55 plus or anything like that. Is there no, it, well, you can't, it, it's implied that you really can't have age limitations because the housing has to be suitable for families. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was in the statute that you can't have age limitations. Yeah, they don't expressly say you can't have age limitations, but the words they use uh, imply that you can't. That, yeah. that was a problem that I had with the guidelines. Just to me, from a practical point of view, it has to be family friendly. But but the guidelines were kind of encouraging studio apartments. They were certainly allowing studio apartments. Mm -hmm. To some extent, I thought they were encouraging studio apartments. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 I said, I don't see a studio apartment as being family friendly. No, mm -hmm. I, don't I don't remember that in particular. Or, or, or even, even, even a one bedroom apartment is not going to be friendly. So that's where we are. Um, um, we, uh, do you want to move on on our uh, agenda? There's not much left really, but- well, All that's left is correspondence. And there was, I mean, Lee already mentioned, um, which I thought was correspondence, but it came in un under the planning director's um, um report uh what what we got from kate um on on uh on 557 highland um, so the only other item was an email that we got that referred that asked us to 
to support and vote positively on a town meeting warrant article that actually was on last night's um, was it last night's town meeting? So it's not even irrelevant. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, I moved um, but to did we have in our packet? I, I, for some reason, I have it's clipped in my print out of the packet. The town of Needham sewer system impact program regulations. Why? Why is that in our packet? Uh, that was included in in the response to the ENF. Um, oh, okay. Should have clipped that onto there. All right. Um, I, I intend to make a comment at uh, town meeting uh, with regard to the article um, that has to do with uh, pub public works uh, uh, capital projects um, on on wastewater, um, because the explanation for that spending, I mean, not waste, we're not sewage disposal, but stormwater, I should have said stormwater, uh, stormwater improvements. Uh, that the reason that we have to spend money on stormwater improvements has to do with um, multifamily housing having been built without proper stormwater uh, management and uh, subdivisions being built without proper stormwater management. And it almost seems to me it implies that the planning board has been doing something wrong because we haven't been watching um, this issue as we've been approving projects. And um, I have you? We, we, uh, the town adopted new uh, stormwater re regulations. Um, I think it was 2018. I, I collected it all together. I don't actually have any, I have it in a pile behind me. I don't want to bring it out and bore everybody. But, you know, the town has addressed these through the new Nipponese regulations. So all the, the only point I want to make is it may be that you know, in decades past, uh, the town wasn't um, addressing the need for uh, on-site uh, on st storage of stormwater and um, mitigation of stormwater, but we certainly are doing so now. Um, and um, both in, in improving developments and improving subdivisions. I just don't wanna let it kind of hang out there that, you know, you know, this is all our fault. Not that they blame the planning board, but the way you read it, it almost seems that way, you know? Thank you, Jean, for raising that and being aware of that. Yeah. You keep, keep in mind, I mean, keep in mind that, um, I mean, it's a t I mean, the planning board is, we are the town. You know, we, we, are, we are a town. We are the whole part of the town type of thing. So if it's happening, it's happening because of the whole, the town is a whole entity. But also what's happening is, I mean, trees are part of the stormwater runoff issue. Less trees means there is more storm water runoff issue because less trees, less water is being absorbed into the trees. So mm -hmm. trees, trees are absolutely part of the problem. It's part of the solution, part of the problem. Lack of trees, part of the problem, or trees, part of the solution. So they're part of it as well. Yeah. We'll so, I mean, I leave it to you if you want to make that comment already on the same subject, but uh, I do intend to no, make a make comment that. to town meeting so that town meeting recognizes that we did it the town did adopt these new nepotes regulations and that in accordance with those regulations, there has been a dramatic change in the way development is treated on this issue. Um, Thanks, Jean. You got my yeah. thumbs up. Okay. I heard a motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. A second. second. A motion to adjourn and a second. Artie Crocker. Aye. Jean McKnight. Aye. Natasha Raspada. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. Before I make it final. Aye, Alex. Chair votes aye. <laughs> We're adjourned. Thank you. Well, it's not even 10 Again.